Oh yeah, it's eight o'clock. Wait, we're on. Okay. And we're back with. Good evening, everyone. I want to thank you uh, for joining us tonight at the Municipal Budget Committee. And tonight is another workshop. Today is Thursday, November fourth. If you can all join us, we we'll pledge allegiance. <laughs> Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm glad everybody's in sync. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people are more on this. We're all good. All right. Thank you, everyone. I know tonight is a very busy night, but there's limited dates on the schedule that we can have, and this happens to be one of them. For anyone who has not gotten out to vote, uh, polls close at 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And it's been a busy day, so you're going to want to get there. And for that very same reason, we have departments that were very busy today, unusually busy. So while you had one line up, it got changed a little bit. And basically, on your agenda, we will not be doing legal tonight. That has been moved to the 14th. Instead, we will be doing <coughs> assessing, which was going to be at a, at a different date. And we're not going to do MIS because they have their hands full broadcasting us and getting things ready for broadcast later on this evening. As we ended the meeting last week, I asked everybody's endurance tonight um, for, from the standpoint that cable would be very busy after 9.30, getting the um, plates ready and bringing the equipment through. So if we could look at our time tonight, maybe perhaps forego the break and just keep at it so that we can be out of their way. If it's not possible, it's not possible. But if we keep it in the forefront of our mind, maybe we can make it so. I'm going to go around the table um, quickly tonight and have all our members introduce themselves. I think I'm going to start on my right, your left, uh, with our newest member. Oh, Glenn Farrell. Jim O'Loughlin. Richard Garnier, Bob Ladd, Jones, Stephen LeBranch, Mike Jones, Eileen Latimer, Chairman, Brian Lobble, Mike, Mike Pierce, Sonny Kravitz, yeah, Jerry Zanoy, Joe Wisrowski. Thank you, everyone. And I know everybody's concerned about the secretarial updates, so I'm going to give it to you. And it's happy news. You know, sometimes we find moments that we disagree with things and, and Sometimes we find good remedies for those disagreements. Um, we had a secretary who, as you know, um, felt offended and left um, our service after 13 years. And it was inadvertent and, and not meant, but um, we have a <coughs> member who stepped up to the plate and apologized in a way that let her know that her service was well considered and needed and that the whole situation that had her resign had a remedy to it. And I thank that member for doing that very publicly. And for that reason, our secretary from the past has sent us an email to reconsider her being our secretary going forward. So with that being said, um, I, I think it, it would be nice to have a motion and have it vote as a, a sign of confidence going forward. And um, if I can have that motion. I'll have a motion to bring back Joan. You're going to make it, you mean? Yes. <laughs> and all those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? I am. I have a reason for that, but I won't go into it now. Okay. Abstain by Mike Pearson. Well, I, did you want to have a discussion about that? Or? Well, I have very strong feelings about people who it's like, it's like somebody running for office in Hampton 
If you're going to run for office, then do the job. If you're not going to do the job, don't run for the office. And to resign, I think, is not a good thing. And people are going to disagree. People are always going to fuss and fight. If they don't, they're not normal. So getting offended, if I had a nickel for every time I've been offended in this town politically, I'd be fantastically rich. So I don't, I don't agree with the reason that was given for her leaving. Therefore, I don't agree with her coming back. <laughs> you weren't in her right. shoes. So that. Well, I mean, I, 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 I need. Oh, I know the vote's been taken. I don't there's know. There's a lot. There's a lot of confusion around here. I think it's completely unnecessary. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I understood that that the recording secretary was an independent contractor until very recently. And thank you for Jamie when you mentioned uh, FICA going up. Uh, ding ding in my head I went and looked it up and found that in fact it's an employee not an independent contractor and that's that's my horror began mm -hmm. but that led to other issues relative to you know whether it's appropriate for uh, this committee to be discussing uh, you know employment employee policy in, in a public meeting I think it is, was wholly inappropriate to begin with and uh, whether whether she has resigned or not is really not up to this committee it's really up to the town manager who employs all employees of the town according to the personnel policy I'm happy to to engage in a, a motion to welcome her back but it's really not we don't employ her the town manager does and we just need to keep that in mind we have bounds to our office and we'd be best served everyone would be best served if we stayed in the bounds of our office in the bounds of our office, as I best see it, is we do not have control over employees. That's the town manager. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to welcome the vote. Welcome Joan back. I welcome her back. All right. May I see the vote again, please? It was, was it only one abstention. One abstention. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Now moving on. This evening we will start with planning and we, uh, page, 29. page 29 we have a couple of faces we don't usually see and that's not your teeth thank you good evening everyone um, I'm here tonight to represent the Hampton Planning Board um, as we've been through a transition period and we've gone out, reorganized our department, re looked at different things and have um, come here tonight to present our budget and also put some faces with some names. Um, Lori Olivier is our office manager in the planning department. And Jason Vachon, if I'm saying it right, mm -hmm. is our new planner. And we're very happy to finally have a sitting planner to help us get through our meetings and everything. Um, it's could, been you, could you spell Jason's last name? I'll spell it right here, Steve. B A C H A N D. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I guess we'll begin with, I guess someone has to nominate our yeah, oh, you budget who, amount or you something. You know who we're missing or tonight. Jim, Slack, yeah. Jim we're missing Jim Waddell, yeah. Waddell. Hold Sorry. on one minute. <laughs> and the school rep, right? No, Jerry's here for that. Oh, you sorry, oh, Jerry. I always think yeah. of you with your other hat on. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jim's at the booth. Yeah, budget. I'm sorry, Jerry. No, he was at the You was at the I think you didn't nominate our budget. Let's do it by the subs. You want to do it? Yeah, let's do it. It's 138. You want to move it? Yeah. Who's going to move it? I'll move it. Okay, I'll move it. 138102. Yeah. 138102. I'll move that. You just, you just moved I yeah, just Mike moved is going to move it. I moved and I seconded it. Okay. Thank All you. Right, thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, do, how do you want us to proceed? You did send us some questions. Yeah. Okay. We did. Um, or, um, or how, you know, where, give me some direction. I'm more than happy to move in that direction. 
We did send you some questions, and you know, we can start there. That way, we're not duplicating ourselves as we're going through this. But it's going, is that's going to jump around from section to section, right, Keith? Well, I have what I can see our answers okay. or responses to, which may lead to other questions, but there are responses. All right. You know, everybody has a copy of the questions tonight. Why don't we start with those? With the questions okay. and your responses. Mm -hmm. okay, we were sent some questions. Um, one was, um, it, it looks like a part-time secretary was made a full-time employee and given a pay raise and a title as office manager. Well, I, I, I would like to answer that question as um, we've had a full-time secretary in the planning office since Barbara Renal was there. She started as part-time and went full-time, and she was there until 2007. And that was followed by uh, Christine Osman, who came in as another full-time secretary at 35 hours a week. We had Candace Sickard, who was there for 35 hours a week. And we had, um, now we have, Lori was there and is, is there for 35 hours a week. Um, then the question was, what was the pay raise in dollars and percentage increase? Well, was Lori made the uh, public manager? Yes. Um, her uh, the office manager's wage is twenty one oh eight now, um, and it's and what it is based upon is the new requirements and the skill set, along with the expectations and the new responsibilities. As we have, our, our Laurie's taken on a lot more responsibilities as we learn through the evolution of not having a permanent planner. Lori learned she has a lot of skill sets. And to become a very valuable uh, asset to the community. Um, 21080. Is it 21080? $21.08. $21 oh, an hour. Oh, what's yes. that per year? I don't have that. That's at 35 hours a week. Okay, you can do the math. Okay. Um, now, if you, uh, we call her an office manager because of increased responsibilities. But there are other secretaries out there that are making tw the average is twenty three dollars an hour yeah. in our in our district, in the school in the town employment. B was what is the dollar impact on fringe benefits? There aren't any impacts on um, fringe benefits because they were always full. It was a full time position, the new title and new responsibility. That's part time. Really? Yeah. So her benefit, there's no change in benefit. There's no change. I think what everybody saw was, we're going to stop there for a second. I think everybody saw that we went from two different departments or two different line items, one called planning board and one called office of planning. And to be perfectly honest with you, from my other background <coughs> in budgeting, Mm -hmm. This is probably not the best way to represent our department. So what we've done is that we've we've brought them both together, and um, to to put supplies, not divvying them up between the board and that. And I just think it, it made more sense. Um, no, no, and it, was, it took me about five or ten minutes to figure out what the hell happened. Because <laughs> I mean, I was trying to figure out where what happened to one of the departments. I couldn't find it. <laughs> and I think that made. Um, not only uh, Chrissy happy that it wasn't a few less accounts to really keep track of, but also um, where Lori's um, will be responsible for the budgeting and stuff, is some, some more responsibility. Um, it makes it easier for her instead of deciding exactly where. What it was her previous to. wage at twenty one oh eight? What was previous? I don't know what it was. Seventeen fifty. About eighteen fifty. Seventeen fifty. Seventeen fifty. From seventeen fifty to twenty one oh eight. Right. Except the, the 2108 is about 38,366. Mm -hmm. right. And the 1750 is around 32 ish. But to be clear, that's just not an increase. That's assuming a lot more responsibility officially. Yeah. That's correct. Mm -hmm. and, and that was what was needed in the department as well as a highly trained planner because um, we would like to um, be as effective as we can in the office. So but that's not thousand. an apples for an apple. So when you are reviewing this, this is not purely an increase. Thank you for recognizing that. Okay, I will pick up on question 2A with the combining of the two departments. Mm -hmm. Staff development looks okay. 
forget 2014 as planned, it was not here. The previous um, previous year average 1382. Years, yeah, and 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 my response is we agree and thank you. Oh. That's what we're we have, we're asking what for 1500, which is pretty close to what the average was. Okay. Um, the next part under two was uh, contracted services. On the other hand, we can easily deduct uh, 14,000 when we average the last three years along with the annualization. No, it says it can be reduced to 14 when you average the last three years along with the annualized to 14 actuals. Thank you. Was this your question, Jerry? Yes. Okay. Um, Why are they at 4,000 was my question. Okay. Well, Another part of putting all this budgets together is so um, I didn't want to change much because Jason's new here and we also want to have him to have a little bit of flexibility in that. We are fixed, we have fixed cost in that account with the um, Rockingham Planning Commission which is 12 grand. So when you subtract it out we've got $5,000 and under that he's already talked about some software. Um, that we want to piggyback on with um, planning and zoning, uh, with assessing in public works, um, with the GIS yeah. stuff, so that it lends itself to be more, to have access at his desktop for all the GIS information, that type of thing. So something like that would come out of it. We are, we haven't done any technical assistance this current year because we were in limbo. Maybe that's a bad term, but. Um, and also master plan updates would be charged with that account when we go forward with that. Which line item is that again? Uh, that was question 2C. What? So it's advertising. No, it was contracted services and dues. Yeah, contracted services. Okay. Um, contracted services and dues. Okay. Keith, I'm just going to jump in here before I lose my train of thought on that one. Since what was budgeted this year has not been used is any of that can any of that be purchased in this year before we get to the end of the year I I believe the software I think is a fifteen hundred dollar startup and then it's a five hundred dollar a year maintenance per user mm -hmm. so we would be purchasing the I don't know what you want to call it, whatever they boot up into our license sure and then 500 would be our annual maintenance cost to have updated software and access to um, the, the tools that the software can so use. So possibly $2,000 that could come out of the residual <coughs> budget from it, it, 2014? I don't know. I'm we'll thinking the 1500 includes the first year's um, licensing. The, yeah, the, uh, the maintenance is included within the first year's licensing. And after that, just the maintenance, annual maintenance, which should be less in subsequent years after so. Good question. Um, yeah, it's our goal is to try and chip away at I, 2015, I, and as we're seeing some surpluses and some, no, well not surpluses, some unused portions of the 2014 budget. Wondering if some of these things cannot be acquired or can be acquired in 2014 for use in 2015, right. but out of this budget. But, okay, and I thought that we try to recognize the year of the expense. That would be the fifteen hundred would probably go into this year, and then the renewal date will probably be. Well, we're so close to the end of the year. Um, I don't. I don't really know how to answer that question. When we were developing the budget, these are some of the questions I'd ask Jason. Um, post original development of the budget was. What organizations, professional organizations, that he probably needs to belong to, to you know, in the Hampshire planning to to keep up with whatever planners do when they go to these planning conventions, um, you know, access. To, they do plan. <laughs> we spend most of our time looking at plans, but um, there are other organizations that he might want to belong to. We don't know if certification maintenance, you know, the annual cost of my AICP certification and maintenance of the credential, um, things of that nature would go into that. Um, go into what? To, 
the uh, what would that go into? Contract. Some of it's going to go into contract to services. Some of it's going to go into professional development, which yeah, is not a large account either. Right, right. Um, but I really would like to give uh, Jason the opportunity to devise how he wants to develop a budget for Hampton. You know, he's coming from out of state, which um, I think brings a fresh point of view to our community. And it's also forcing him to learn some of the New Hampshire laws and ways. Um, the last time we brought someone in, you should probably remember, was Jennifer Kimball. And Jennifer was a star, and because she came in from outside, and I'm not sure this applies to, it's a general rule to all positions, but I thought it brought a fresh set of eyes, and I think after what we've been through, yeah. at this point in time, we need that. Um, you know, it, we didn't have anybody from within, and the state's pool for, um, the talent that Hampton does need for planning is shallow because private enterprise is uh, pretty competitive for the few people that took up planning. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that answers any of the questions, but. What you're, asking, what you're saying, Keith, is you'd like to see some wiggle room to get the planner right. and a new organization. So, you know, you'd, you'd rather maintain the 17 as opposed to the 14. We hear you. Thank you. D three C C. Mm -hmm. I've got the advertising can drop by a thousand. Okay. Yeah. Is that where we're at? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when you look at eleven, twelve, and thirteen actuals, um, and the fact that you probably did a lot of advertising this year for the Valpine. Mm -hmm. Now that's a very interesting way of looking at it. We spent a total of three hundred and twenty-seven dollars looking for the planner because I think most everything else was done online. Ah. Um, so we're not seeing those expenses. Thank you. Okay. Um, $4,000 has been a, a standard in that and it's difficult to, um, it fluctuates based on the, the amount of development, the amount of redevelopment, the amount of wetlands um, requests, zoning board, um, oh, well not zoning board, zoning amendments that need to be published in a, in a local publication. Um, design review has to be notified. and So most of it's done in um, for legal notices as well as uh, certified letters and um, that type of items fall into that. Now, there is some wash there that we don't see because when you do an application, you know, you're paying a certain two dollar, I don't know what the fees are. I'm going to say it's a dollar for this and a dollar for that when someone comes up if they want to subdivide a piece of property, a mover property line, so they have to notify all the adjacent abutters. So we collect some funds from them to pay for the actual U.S. postage. Um, and some of the, the basic fees. We are looking at our fee structure um, to try to boost that up, but we're not looking at any grand dollars here. Um, it's just as things change. And we don't know how, what type of year it's going to be, and we have to budget for it to spend it. Yeah, this year I noticed you pulsed a little bit high. Right. If you take what you've spent year to date and annualize it, it'll be like 4400 bucks, yeah. something like that. Well, you've historically run three, two, three, three and a half, something like that. Through recessionary years. I mean, just the last couple of years have been, you know, things have been popping. What are the things you advertise for again? Legal notices. Legal mm -hmm. notices. Well, that's a nice way of putting it down to one word. <laughs> What's that? Um, and the reason we do legal notices is for every site plan, any subdivisions, special permits, zoning amendments, or not zoning amendments, yes, zoning yes, amendments, zoning condominium conversions, design review, pretty much everything comes in front of us. We have to advertise. Yeah, or, yeah, or we have to notify the abutters, the direct abutters that this change. Why have the developers paying for? They are, but we have to have it in, we have to have, we have to have, probably someone better in the budgeting area can explain this, but we have to have the line. a line with the money that we're going to spend in it so that we can collect it, because we're going to spend it out. Mm -hmm. 
And when we get the receivables, when Lori gets the money, it just goes back in the general fund to replenish, right. replenish that. Is that correct? Yeah, it's two sides of the ledger. Yeah. Expense revenue. So where's the money going? I mean, if you're paying for it, the general developers are paying for it, is it going into the general fund? I imagine yes. it goes to reduce the budget. Town Council of Revenue, is that the same? I believe up. they do. Yeah. It'll show up on the income sheet. I don't know, maybe. Oh, uh, I, I, how much? I don't know how much revenue we get. She's looking it up now. Yeah. All right, let's a couple up. grand or whatever it's going to be. You may want to make yourself a note because we will have a night that we will discuss revenues only, and that is where we. We don't see it in our department. But it's just right. Right. Yeah. Oh, there, actually, there is a note right at the bottom of page 30, estimated 2014 revenue of $70,000. Oh, yeah, I see it. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice, nice file. <laughs> That's very good. Keep advertising. <laughs> 17K. All right. Okay. Um, three. What is the story behind grant actuals? We had one in 2013 for 33855 and now one in 2014 for 5025 um, It is shown as an expense now. Is it offset by a revenue received? Well, actually, we did not. We have a line for grants, but we didn't request any money for grants. Well, and when we apply for a grant, then yeah. that money will go in there because that'll be like a wash account as well. Right. Wash against the revenue that came in? Well, I think we have to book it and then we spend the appropriation to whatever the okay. grant was right? given to. And then you reimburse the yeah. grant. So I figured that I, it always throws me. I think. You had some too, like that. I yeah. There are basically two different, two different types of grants. One that you anticipate, right, which gets booked as revenue. Yeah. And then you have the unanticipated grant, something that comes up that you didn't anticipate for that year, and you have to go adjust it. So that's an anticipated grant that has revenue. This is the gotcha. option. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. But the problem here is really we don't have visibility to that. That's what that's what gave rise to the question, right? I right. Yeah. I, I well, I mean, I missed that fact that well. I don't no, know that we've anything. written any grant request yet. To, you know, <coughs> no, it's a function of accounting, really. So whether accounting things, yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and, yeah. and now we go to supplies and expenses. Supplies and expenses for the two combined departments over the last three years was with 2014 annualized at 3,326. Well, this is in the ballpark. Um, it's also would be um, our first year with our new copy printer scanner, um, which we don't know what the expenses are going to be like that because we actually think they should be a savings compared to the old machine that was breaking down. But we also don't know now that we have it, we're hoping that more pe more people in the department will use it um, because it's you know it's it's a shared uh, scanner and stuff. So we really don't know what the wear and tear will be on it. That's in there. That's part of that. Um, no, from a three-hole punch to photocopy paper. Um, Lori does have a, a we have a, pr a small printer for very minor printing in, at Lori's desk um, instead of going upstairs to the, uh, you know, the, the remote printer. Um, so there's a little money in there for toner, pens, pencils, envelopes. Um, here again, we probably could reduce something in there, but I'd also like to give the opportunity for um, Lori and Jason to ferret out um, what's really needed in that, and obviously, what's <coughs> not expanded gets returned. That, um, wasn't there a scanner printer combination purchase this year? Mm -hmm. that's yes, part of that? that's what you see. You see that big drum when you right. first come in right outside the office. So I assume part of the expenses is uh, is that going to be this contract? Is that going to be shed, shed with building? Building? Yes. We only we only absorb fifty percent of the expense in our budget. It's probably a good thing. <laughs> I only have one more comment. Oh, absolutely. Is, uh, it looks to me like your your operating budget 
is just only six hundred dollars above the default. Mm -hmm. So if the operating budget fails, you're essentially going to get the same thing in the default yeah. budget. So the salaries are baked into the default budget. Most of the expenses are too. So I'm just looking at the default budget now. It's one thirty six four seven nine. A new budget in one thirty eight one oh two six hundred buck difference. So you, you certainly, you know, I'm trying to hold the line as best we can. Yeah, but they don't have any any impact at all on the default budget. I mean, that's the Board of Selectmen that's creating that default budget. So. I, no, my only point was, Tim, that a lot of these, if you go through the default budget, you see a lot of stuff being reflected back from the operating budget to the default budget. Right, yeah. what, what Mr. Pierce was calling an end run around the tax right. base. Right, backdooring or whatever. Yeah. And it's yeah. happening yeah. here as well, here, it's, not, no it's, not their, it's not their fault. That's my point. We had agreed that we would take turns around the table and not cross. <coughs> to talk about the default budget is not our job right now, only the budget. So let's well, we'll try to stay on point with the budget right now. Um, we'll leave room for we, discussion. We really there. tried to stay as close as we could, and I think we took almost exactly what we did for most of our expenses and everything we tried to stay as tight as we could. Um, we are excited about having the department being fully staffed. Um, we have two really wonderful people. I, I mean, I don't want to sing Kumbaya, but um, we really, uh, Jason, is. it was a great find. He comes with a lot of great background to Hampton, um, public and private enterprise. And Lori has has stepped up she, before she was doing what she was directed to, but once once um, the department had evolved into her, with the resignation, um, Lori stepped up to the plate and she learned that she had these skills to do a lot more, and she's more was more than willing to do it. So and it kept it a job interesting for her. Um, and um, I think it's going to be a great department, the two of them, and I wish you all will stop by and visit with them and talk with them and get to know them as best you can. Um, I will we'll get back to your questioning. Thank you. I don't have, uh, have one at the moment, but Glenn, I'm going to start on this side if you have any questions, questions. on this thank section. Thank you. Where have you been for the last year? Um, <laughs> thank you, Keith, for your service, and thank you for how many balls of the title now that you go through. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also okay. Keith, you said that moving the disposition to full time will entail 35 hours per week. Is that how many hours you will be working a week? Or more. If I need to, I stay longer, but um, it's based on 35. Uh, 35 hours. <coughs> uh, when it was a part time position, how many hours were allocated on for the part time position? Maybe, okay. Um, in the beginning, that was one of the first questions. It's, it's been a full-time position for greater than 10 years. It's just how it was accounted for well, that's what I'm saying. two I different I pieces. This line item is a part-time secretarial wage. Right. Right. Now that is deleted because now we're at the full-time. Right. right. Um, but it was never a part-time position. I see. The part-time was further down. Um, under planning board and then planning office at two, two lines. So they took out two it's not very clear. I would agree with that. Some of the salary was taken out of the part time item and some was taken out of the full time item. And it's just an issue. So we will no longer see a line item for a part time secretarial wage. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. But yeah. not to be redundant, the only thing that has changed in this position because, Laura, you were getting benefits. Regardless of how it was down there, you were getting benefits. So the only thing that has changed is the increase to 2108. However, and your duties and responsibilities have increased with that. So the job description is no longer what it was. Thank you. Thank you all for your service and welcome on board. Uh, the next year should be pretty interesting. There's a great deal of development. There's an enormous FEMA problem concerning floodplain maps and insurance issues. And you're going to have plenty of work. And you, the town clearly needs you. And he's getting ready to do the FEMA um, warrant article. That's right. We'll have a keep it current for insurance. So you two should talk. Exactly. <laughs> I have no questions. The only thing I want to mention is that. 
I remember when um, Jamie was here last year, he made a big case about buying that new printer. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we had a default budget. Scanner. Printer scanner. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and you were able to buy it anyway, mm -hmm. which is good. And you split the cost between the art department and the, and the uh, building. So, so we don't need a, that's taken care of. Thank you very much. No, can I bring something up about the scanner while I'm here? Please. <laughs> Since we're talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, what we do need help with is scanning our documents. Because we do have the scanner. And the town is sharing us with us when they have time as a floater um, to help scan the documents so we can get into the electronic age. I just want to put that out there. We have the network. We've got normal yeah. faxing, scanning. Our biggest challenge is a lot of times they come down, or um, some people, when they have a few minutes to start, to, then they look at how many um, plans we have to scan to create the electronic. And generally, they go for coffee and never come back. <laughs> they, 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 they tackle their other tasks that they may have in front of them. I'm trying to be kind about this because the person that does help is a wonderful person. It's just um, th that's a challenge we are having, even though we do have the scanner. Can they be delivered? Do you, do you yeah. have something electronically? Yes. Oh, okay. I believe we can receive them electronically. You're talking about other documents? Yeah. We haven't, we haven't made that leap yet. Okay. But it's something that we can certainly look into. Yeah, because okay. yeah, we, we do need to get, even though the, um, when you go to Rockingham, Lori um, is also responsible for delivering them up there and getting them stamped and, and registered. And a lot of times she'll get up there and she'll find out the mylars are not perfect enough. Do, where they take a scale and they measure the width of the margins, the height of the, of the, the fonts, I mean, sometimes she gets sent back because the, um, the original mylars are not clean enough for Rockingham. They're not working at the content. They don't care about that. They just want to know how it looks. And that meets those certain standards. <laughs> but we have it and we're working towards that. I have no questions. I see no problem. With the budget, we're going to have it here. Um, I do want to say that it's been a difficult year for you all and it has been watching from the outside it has been a huge cooperative effort I know between the planning board and the town manager and the legal department and Laurie if we didn't have you on that ship that boat might have gone down totally um, you held you were the glue that held it together and I want to I want to thank you for that People should know that, that it was no small undertaking to use a planner and keep on going at a time when this town was building crazy after a little hiatus. So publicly thank you very much, not only to you, but Keith, to your board as well. And um, for not only that, but for finding and taking your time and finding the right person. Now, Jason, don't prove us wrong. Don't make me eat my words. Um, but for some careful consideration on what we needed and where we were going in the future and reassessing that particular situation that Laurie has, I think that was an excellent job. The only small little question I have is, there a way to protect that scanner? I know I've watched children who find it a curiosity. Well, we're hoping if we can scan all those documents, those two huge cabinets in my neck of the woods, we could reel it back in. And this will, that takes up those two cabinets with all of those yeah. old Flat. mylars. I mean, just this protection. Stand. We can get them down in the dungeon down here and up here, and then open up that area mm -hmm. and not have to have those huge monster cabinets. Mm -hmm. But I agree, because it looks like such a nice toy. I think he goes for adults. It's like, oh, what's this? Let <laughs> me like, touch it. So that's my only observation. Thank you. Brian? Um, we did purchase it, right? We didn't lease it? We own it. Okay. We have a contract. We have a contract. We purchased it, but we have a, a, a P&M. Yeah. Okay. 
preventative maintenance and service. And I was going to—that was my next point—is what is the warranty on this, or how long, anyway? We did have some information on that. Our, our service contract will, is basically we're buying service for three years without it breaking down. I don't know what we do after that, but basically that's what you yeah. have an extended, it's like an extended warranty, you know, the repair and maintenance contract. Don't think we will have to pay for, there were some things that were not included. Um, it was a drum. 995 is a service contract for two years. $500 a year for the service contract on that machine. Um, and, but we were purchased it at two years. And the purchase of the machine was uh, $6,500. Was the service contract included in the cost, the initial cost? It was separate, so the grand total was 7490 7490 So that was the 6495 plus the 995 for the service contract for two years. Is that baked into your current line items? That's a good question. Or is it mm. paid for out of capital and total? I have to look at my ex our expense report. We'll be under attractive services, I guess. And then our ink was an additional $424.49, which really brings our grand total up to $7,922.23. Repeat it one more time. Please. Yes. I'm gonna plead ignorance on that. Um, because this I, I really don't know how that is taken care of, but I know that we we, we, sh we there is a two year agreement here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's extendable. I assume it is. Um, and well you've got some time now that you can look into it. You have nothing budgeted in this budget for that. That purchase was executed out of 14, right? Correct. Right. So you're clear for the 15 budget. It really shouldn't be an issue. That's all. I think it was okay. a total package. Yeah, right. I all don't right. think you're fine. There's nothing in this budget. Uh, yeah. But you all might want to make yourselves a notation because that will be a cost that will come back again somewhere. Right. Mm -hmm. And you'll be looking at when that year kicks in, so it won't be this year or next year. 2014 to 2015. Well, we had it a year, kind of. So we'd have so. to go into next year. Because, the six Right. Because so when you're looking, at, mm -hmm. we're doing the 2015 budget. When we're looking at the 2016 budget, you're going to see this amount of money back in there where you didn't see any, and it just will help you to make a notation from now that this was part of the purchase. The lease was prepaid, basically. And in the future, these things are going to be at our fingertips because the budget mm -hmm. historically will be maintained much better. <laughs> From our okay. department we perspective. We say that every year. Mm. I'm just saying go forward. Oh, the, our, our in general, Keith. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. I so know um, the one other expense that we have would be the printhead unit. It's not covered. That's four hundred and fifty dollars because it's a wear item, um, and that should last, depending on how we use it, at least eighteen to twenty-four months. But that's at high use, so I think it'll last longer than that because um, we'll be scanning mostly. It's in the close to two years. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank Are we you. charging for use on this? Well, it's mostly. I don't know that any out we outsiders have used Well, it. that's what I'm outsiders asking. Do. We just charge $5 for a standard size plan. If they want a copy, it's $5 a sheet. But a, a plan but that they're submitting to us or coming in off the street? If they hey. want one off the street, they would a copy. Okay. Oh, I do. Okay, I'm going to go this way. And Brian? impact fees, are we doing anything as far as new buildings, et cetera, et cetera? I think impact fees would be an issue for another evening, not that I'm afraid, not right. afraid okay. to answer it. Was... Um, but from a planning board perspective, there are a lot of cogs that have to be in place um, for all the mechanisms to work 
to um, squeeze more money out of um, or to protect the community by collecting money in advance. Um, a lot of the, the key things are that we have to have the plan in place for at least five years before we start collecting it. These are my, my what I'm pulling from memory here, folks. But you have to have it, it has to be down and going to happen. Okay? So let's say we have a plan for a $100,000 item and we start collecting whatever it is, $3 a building or something like that. And if it doesn't happen, all that money has to be returned to the developers it was collected for. So um, there is a report written for um, the, uh, the safety buildings. And um, it was the uh, decision of the board that the amount of money that was going to be recovered um, and the amount of bookkeeping that it took to, to recover the cost and what people are paying in taxes on all the new property, it was very minimal amount of money. And I mean, I think we were looking at maybe $10,000 that we would have actually collected because the community had known it had needed it. So you can't put the whole new cost on the whole building on someone coming in to put up one house. I mean, they can't put, uh, you know, a $300,000 house, you can't put, you know, a uh, million dollar um, impact fee on. Um, so, I, I think to understand how impact fees work isn't quite as easy as just um, Exeter Road may be a perfect example. Mm -hmm. Some of that may be able to be done, but our neglect in maintenance is not an impact fee thing that's allowed because we should be taking care of things along the way. So it makes it very difficult. We get frustrated too when people ask about impact fees. It is, it's, 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 it's an, another long meeting and a lot of education, um, you know, and then maybe there are some things that we could do. I mean, in the uh, school department, we do have impact fees. Right. And as you all know, that the middle school is probably going to be renovated sometime before the 22nd century. And <laughs> that, that would certainly probably be uh, re-looked at at that time to continue to have the impact fees for the additional um, impact that new building would have on that facility. Um, you know, we could collect them for um, a, a recreational center, but if we're never going to have it, we can collect all the money we have, but if it doesn't happen, I think within five or seven years, I don't know exactly what the legislation is, then we'd have to return the money. So um, I don't think it's a panacea that we would like it to be. Um, <coughs> Hampton's a very desirable place to live. We work very hard to create a, a desirable place to build. You know, we're kind of an economic machine as well, and that we do want to bring business to Hampton. Um, we do want home properties to increase in value, and a lot of the building and renov as you're going to see, and, and Kevin could probably back this up. A lot of it's renovations. It's not all brand new construction of new subdivisions and, and that type of thing. And I don't know how that would be with impact fees either. Mm -hmm. You know, when you tear down a, a cottage and you put up a year-round home, um, it's, you know, it's, it's certainly not going to be faced with impact fee from the schools or from any other mechanism we might have had. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a good discussion, but it's, it's, it's very deep. Well, the only, my only thing about that would be is now you're inclusive, you know, it's going to be, a, yes, I understand, it's going to be a, a work in progress, but I was just more or less curious to see if, if we can, if we're look, really looking at that. We continue to reassess Because especially it. as far as sewer and et cetera, et cetera. But keep in mind, and I'm, I know you guys want to move on. It, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's huge, and we can't do it for deferred maintenance. Right. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. I think to move on from this subject, however, I do think that it is worthy of mm -hmm. a very open conversation. Um, Great. Not here tonight, but I would welcome the opportunity to get with you, Keith, to start to open up the dynamics of this conversation. All right? 
Michael? I agree with what you just said, Madam Chairman. Uh, impact fees were mm -hmm. very important. We missed out on the fire stations, period. So that's a big loss. So I think it should have been done years ago. I agree with what you said. Anyway, I, have a, I don't quite follow your math and so forth and your explanation on regular wages. I'm trying to get to the 112000 and I was looking at Jamie made roughly 55, Lori made roughly 32 in the last report I looked at. And I'm trying to figure out how we get to 112 because that doesn't quite add up. So can you can tell me what the new wages is for the planner? That would help. And what uh, Lori's new salary is? Because I asked that question a while ago, and somebody guess, guessed that. Her new salary is 38,366. 366? 38,366. You figured that one out? Thank yep. you. What did you come up with, the planner? I don't know. It was, it planner was, will be $70,000. $70,000. OK. So there's been a significant increase in the planning salary from fifty-five to 70000 Absolutely. And then we got uh, Lori moving from roughly 32-ish to 38-ish. Okay, that explains some of it. So now my question is, when did the um, all these events take place? When did we, when did you come on? What was the, um, the, the in the summer we started this yeah, process. Was, yeah. And when did you promote Lori's position? In, in the, uh, did we do that July 1st? Oh, no, it was July. Yeah, you're right. July 1st. Yeah, I think it's July. Okay. I'm just wondering if there's another end run around the default budget because I noticed that the numbers are in the default budget too. Those higher numbers are the 112. Right. And I was just trying to check on that again because uh, it's significant. <clears throat> and uh, we, we, we struggle with that as well, Michael. But we needed to get the best person we could. And I, I guess that's up for debate. Yeah. Proof will be in the pudding, but to attract a, a highly qualified candidate, um, that's what we needed to do. And the thing, and the, the biggest problem I have is we're changing a, making a new position and doing away with an old one, and that's another in run around the voters. Well, we can still call her administrative assistant if you want to. I'm not fussing about that. I'm just I saying mean, that's if, what you're, you if did. that's what the the question is, because. I, I, we thought the title was more reflective of what her responsibilities were. Mm -hmm. um, she still, if we were to say that position was administrative assistant position, I believe I said there were some, um, her salary was still not at the, um, I would, what's called the going rate in Hampton, which is $23 an hour. I don't know what the going rate in Hampton is. I'm just looking at what's happened in the past, so I can't help you there. Okay. No, I can't get into that one. But I'm just yes. saying, looking at the line item there, we're going from what looks like 72 to 112. If you, but you throw in that part-time mm -hmm. thing, there, that sort of makes it a little confusing. But that's a significant increase overall. You notice it's a 58.20 increase. That's a significant increase. I'm quite concerned about that. But Okay, you explain that. Okay, now uh, back to uh, one other question. I still don't quite understand uh, why you uh, seem to think that you needed the um, money, the, the $4,000 in the, uh, uh, what was it, the contracted services, or was that in advertising? I, was, I don't know. You're asking the advertising. question, Mike. Well, you were explaining it earlier, and I, I couldn't follow which line you're in, and I asked which line you were talking about, and you said it was contracted services, I guess. Yeah. But anyway. I'm all set with that. I'll move on. Thank you. Senate? Well, the four thousand dollars was Advertised. under advertising. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. okay. If you're referring to my question that I asked, that I answered, that you explained from the list yeah. you had. Okay, yeah. that's a wash account. Okay, not all wash. Seventeen hundred in income. Seventeen thousand. Seventeen thousand. Seventy four k. For the we bring in seventeen thousand dollars on postage reimbursement. No. Oh well, no, that's no, that's, that's the planning revenue. board. Yeah. Revenue. Total revenues right. for the planning board. Yeah, right. Go, going for, well, we're in this section here, and not to interrupt, but going forward on some of these things, especially in the budget, where we get money back, a breakdown. I mean, in, in a couple of these categories, there's line for $3,600 under supplies and expenses, but they're all listed on one line. We have no way of knowing, is this a $50 item, is it a $1,000 item? And then I think um, Keith and Jason going forward, 
it enables us to look too and reflect on money coming in and when you can clearly see the wash the, the discussion goes away it's very transparent mm. whenever it's lumped together like that the transparency goes away on the fair items enough. themselves fair enough you've heard me Keith say that before other departments and other things fair enough okay. I've got a couple of questions you mentioned the software program mm -hmm. did you check whether other towns were using this program or what their experience has been with it? I can I can tell you that I have experience using the software. I've used it in other towns that I've worked for. It's it's the staple program, Esri Arc GIS. It's the staple GIS program that most cities and towns have. I'm trained in using it. I will put it to use if we have it. And uh, the, you know, the need is having the uh, the license, and which I yeah. Uh, what I found usually is when somebody puts a new software program it creates as many problems as it solves so aren't we piggybacking on what the town already has yeah yeah we have a we're contracted with the okay, so provider we're, we're, we're just becoming an additional we're just user an additional license for right. the department. i got another question my right. understanding of planning yeah. boards is that most towns are a source of revenue to the town i'm i'm just curious to see how much money you're generating I see you've got a hundred thirty-eight thousand dollar budget. I'm just curious to see what sort of revenue you generate. Seventeen thousand. Seventeen thousand. Uh, Seventeen thousand bucks. Yeah. I understand that, but my, oh. my understanding is it's really a source of revenue to a lot of towns. For thirteen, it was seventeen. Or something that we just saw. And, and was that fees or reimbursement for postage? Well, All I know like is that, that just the planning. You know, that's that. Revenue. Revenue. Can I, okay. can I suggest that maybe you talk to some of the neighboring towns and see what whether they generate more revenue than they than they spend? We can, but well, I think I that think I useful. don't think we need them to waste his time doing right. that. Honestly, mm -hmm. you, if that's something you want to look into, Sonny. But I don't think we need to waste our planners' time finding out what other towns do. I mean, we could call impact fees as revenue, and mm -hmm. how much were the impact fees? Yeah, about a hundred thousand oh, dollars. Yes. I think we've heard several times a desire to have more visibility on the income, and that's really a question of accounting. It's not a question yeah, of right. their operation. I, if you want, I, I agree with you. We should see that. I, um, I'm hoping that we can move forward and keep a, a much cleaner records here um, to reflect that. And um, I think we have a well rewarded um, department. And if you want to cut their salaries, they're well rewarded. And I think that Lori has proved herself by stepping up to the plate to be doing a fantastic yeah. job and well worth what we pay what her. I, what I wanted to say is I think Lori's held it together when there was a vacancy, so you have to give her credit for that. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Lori. Jerry, I'm going to we started with you, kind of. Um, <laughs> Joe? <laughs> All right. <coughs> Rich, something that we haven't said? Well, just very quickly, let's go back to that, that printer scanner for a second. You said that you do share that with the building department, right? They share the use of it. Does building share the expense of the update of the daily maintenance, or you say the ink, the rollers? We split it 50-50 to put, include it how All we put it. it in our budget. All right, when you say 50-50, but doesn't, doesn't the assessing use that machine too? The duplicate maps? Or? Well, we have a, we have a no, it's yeah. build, building. Oh, you have, all right. Yeah. So it's building. a 50-50 proposition between you and building for that particular unit. Okay. okay. So we have a motion and a second. Everybody's had We don't have a motion yet. We don't have. It was moved by Mike Plouffe yeah, and moved. Right. seconded by Jerry, but now we need a motion. Yes. Yeah, we need, we need now we yeah, ask questions, and now we have an opportunity for a discussion about yeah. the motion. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. And I'm, and I'm happy to go forward with the discussion, if I, if I might. You know, one hour we've spent on one department. I know, yeah. and that's, yeah. we've got to move, we've got to move a little if, faster if, if here, folks. 930 is, something happens at 930, yeah. we're blowing this whole thing. <laughs> we got about seven departments here. <laughs> well, no matter what, we're not going to fly through anything. Uh, yeah. uh, I agree right. with that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two are out, so you got May five. I? Did you get more questions over there? 
vote? No, I simply I, I yielded on the question. I simply want to make a statement before we vote. Did you have any questions? You didn't. We passed you. I, I said I don't have any questions. Right. I do and have we a did, statement a, we like did allow me. that at the end. We could pass. The jury, you had your turn to talk. Um, and we did say as we went around the table, you could pass, but we weren't going back and forth two no, times. Okay. okay. So, Tim? With respect to you having your right to Thank you. input something in here, but Thank after you. this, everybody's had a turn, and we will move on to a vote. You know, I've watched the, the planning board in action on TV. You guys doing a tremendous amount of work. Thank you. Uh, you get the same enormous pay that we on the budget committee get, which is exactly zero. Um, so I really appreciate the effort that you guys put in, because you have a lot more meetings, and you go to a lot more depth on a lot of different stuff. And I also appreciate the need for a town planner and an assistant or an administrative assistant or whatever you want to call that position. I see the need for both. However, when I've heard the questions going around here, I see that uh, there was, I got this, this uh, feeling as though we were presenting this as though it were a flat budget, and it's not. It's up 22%. And also, as you well know from the discussions earlier in the year, the two, there are two positions, not just one, but two positions that were put before the voters in Warren articles in which they voted no for those positions. And I have to stay with my voters. So I'm going to have to vote no on your budget, but it's not because I don't value your function. I do value your function. I do value your work. Okay. But I have to maintain integrity with the vote. Fair enough. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Right. I'll make a motion to approve 138-102. Second. All those in favor? Okay, the post. Two. Mike Pierce. And abstain? Anyone? And Jerry's going to John. abstain. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome aboard, everybody. <coughs> Where have you been? They've been aboard all along. Keith. Well, no. no, Jason is there. Welcome, Jason. To the town of Hampton. Comment, please. Who's going to do the zoning board? I don't. I guess building. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Are you doing zoning? Um, well, it's you know, a whole lot to discuss with us. So. No. Well, you spent an hour. It's time to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Don't let the door hit you, huh? Just before we go any further, you know, I think we're getting kind of tangled up here between the, the questions and the discussions after the motions. You know, uh, we. We go around the table asking questions, response to, or response to the questions we've asked, and then we make a motion. We're going around once, Richard. Let well, me clarify it. Well, we have we didn't go around once. We opened well, it up we, for discussion after a motion was made and ready to start again. You know, it, is that confusing you? I think it's it's very time consuming. Well. This, I mean, is, gonna, this is a budget process, okay, not, not, a, not a time Are we going to ask clock. questions or ask them to respond to these submitted requests? Yeah, and then we're going go around, around the table and then go back again and make a motion to pass the budget and open it for discussion again. No, That's we're having the them start out with answering the questions, reviewing right. the budget, yeah. and then going around the table one time for everybody to have input on the combination of the questions that were asked as okay. well as, we'll as the budget goes, issues. I just think we're getting... I okay. don't see what the problem is. All right. okay. Which one are we going to do? Is your concern right. that a motion Let's was made twice? Let's move on so that we're not here all night. Okay. Which one? Okay. Just one motion is what he wanted. There were two motions. In the yeah, it, it should just be the one motion. That's yeah. what's getting confusing. We're opening up the line for this discussion. This is what I need a little clarification. Last week, there ought to be we just did the motion and we Jim moved it. But then there was a motion made afterwards. So now it's just going to be a motion. 
It's a motion in the beginning. Okay. All you need. Well, right. we did it last week. We did it different way. Yeah, that's why I'm. Right. Well, I need clarification. Okay. How do you want to do it? No, you'd only need the one motion to open it up. The second and the discussion is the whole thing is part of the discussion. I agree, including there the answering of the minutes. We don't need if the motion. Need. If the motion is to open it up, then you will need a motion to approve it. But if you just put out a motion to approve it. Then you can proceed with the question, subsequent discussion, and then vote. Well, let's do that. A motion Thank you. to approve that. Kevin, would you like to join us before, <laughs> yeah. before it's right. Wednesday? Yeah. What we're, what are we going to be on here? We're going to be before it's Wednesday. Page 31. You're going to be uh, OBS 9 and page 85. Yeah. Kevin, you, since we don't have anyone here to, I guess other than you, to do this with us on zoning. Sure. You will help us. Zoning. On page, I'm page on page 31. 31. 31. 31. Are you going to do zoning now? It's four lines, so let's see how complicated yeah. we can make what it. What, not, what page? 31. 31. 31. 31. 31 and 4. Okay. All right. Zoning's pretty much a flat budget. What's that? You know what? Yeah, it's a flat budget. I'm going to, before we make a motion to move the line, there was only one question that was brought forward for zoning, and that was on supplies and expense. Yeah. That's the $3,600? Yeah. That's a line item for $3,600? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That has to do with that has to do mostly with paying for advertising for our agendas that are posted in the newspaper and that. Is that another item that's also charged or not? Do you well, get income back on that particular we line? Get, we get an application fee, but we don't yeah. Okay. We don't get we just for the uh, advertising of the agenda. That's something that we're obligated to do. Okay. And I can tell you that the zoning board agendas this year, especially, mm. not uncommonly, they're very large. Mm. Okay, I mean, we have seven, eight petitions, nine petitions in an evening. I mean, so those ads get very lengthy, mm -hmm. and I sign off on those invoices when they come in from the paper. And those invoices are quite substantial. It really blows my mind how much it costs to, to place an ad in the paper. So I can tell you right now, just that line item alone, we're, we've almost wiped that out. And we've got two months to go, and I haven't paid for October's ad yet. Okay. Yeah, we're going to stop you there. We're going to blow by that. Give me two minutes. That answered the question that was asked. Beautiful. This. Right. Now, if I could have you move. Well, no. What I do you have mean? a question about that. Okay. You can, but the thing was, I'm not opening that up for discussion. It's still in the budget. I'll move the zoning now I'd board like to move. subtotal at 6110, I believe it is. 53. 5310. Okay, and a second for that? Second. Michael, okay. second it. Jim, now you can come in with that as we go around with that discussion, okay? I just wanted to clarify, get the questions out of the way before we move on this. To move. <coughs> okay. Are we ready to proceed? We are ready to proceed. Who's going? Who needs to go? Who needs to go? You. Yeah. Um, well, you know, Jim had a question on it, so I'll start down there with Jim. I just, it was very simple. Uh, are the applicants paying for that ad to be placed in the paper? What we collect from the applicants are two items. One is the standard application fee mm -hmm. for taking in the application and the packets together and all that and to go before the board. That's the revenue that we bring in. And the other fee that we do collect from the applicants is um, $8 per a butter to cover the cost for the certified mailings to, because every a butter gets notified by certified mail. Not only that, when we notify them with the certified mail, we have to make copies of the agenda you know, so you've got paper supplies and stuff like that that are involved. We've got envelopes and things like that. So all of that falls under the description of that line item. I think the description um, calls it out for office supplies, advertising, etc. stuff so like that. Do you think 
that the application fee is covering all those expenses that are being incurred by the zoning board? Yeah, we adjusted it about three years ago. Including we did make newspaper it, advertising? Um, that account, I think it was ad adjusted, was it three years ago? Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to look back. We did make an adjustment. And I can tell you, it's been coming in pretty much spot on. I can tell you by looking at some of the numbers where we're at right now, this year, a snapshot at it, it might go over just a little bit. But, you know, that's a moving target. Mm -hmm. I could have a month, rare, but I might only have two applications. You know, a small little agenda. I'm not as concerned mailing. about, about the, the number that's here as to whether or not the application process should cover all the expenses. The fees. Well, really? The yeah, fees involved. Nice. Yeah. If, if it's in... in I, I know you have to build into it what's it going to cost for the for the uh, newspaper, but that should all be covered. Yeah. What's that? Your revenue for 13 was 10000 for a year. So. Yeah, that's, that's what we took in. Yeah, yeah. for 13. Yeah. 2013, we took in 10,000, just short of 10,500. Okay. So, you know, again, it's a moving target. Mm -hmm. All right. But we did we did look at that uh, a few years back, and the board did vote to make some adjustments and increases, and we did that in conjunction with the postal fees too as well. We had to put those on the book because the post office went up. Sure. So that's your zoning. All right. Good. Yeah. Madam Chairman, yes, sir. there's a math error in the question. It was not 134, it was it's 4134. It's a big, big difference. Whose question was that? That's my question. Are we going around the table? So, so basically the last four years, the average 4134, so the $3,600 is right on. Are we going around the table or are we playing hopscotch again? No, I just want to correct them. He wants you to right? correct that. Well, All right. Just Where did we stop? Richard. No questions. All right. Bob? No questions. Yep. Pass. Steven? No questions. No. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Pass. I'm okay. Joe? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Record. <laughs> Unanimous. I All right. So it's my mistake. My mistake. All right. Those in favor? Opposed? Stained. Unanimous. Unanimous. Okay. Total number. Yes. Easy and now we're days. going. If you want to move the total number. One hundred forty-three thousand four hundred twelve dollars. No, 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 no. It's fifty-three ten. No, no, no. We, well, we just voted, voted on, on fifty-three ten. Yeah. We just yeah. voted on the subtotal. When you put your hand up, that was the, for the sub. Okay. I believe you're on asking for account number forty-one ninety-one. Right? Now we're looking for a total on both planning and zoning. Just mm -hmm. count forty-one ninety-one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Michael, one forty-three four. Four twelve. Four twelve. Second. This includes okay. planning and etc. Right. Planning, planning and zoning. All right. All those in favor? Opposed. You have two opposed. And an abstention. Pierce and Jones. Jones. You're abstaining or opposed? I'm abstaining. Um, a little shaving, I think. We Jerry fine. abstained. It helps, Stephen, to keep your arms up okay. a little longer 85. when you're not in the majority. Okay. Kevin, <coughs> we can't let you off that hot seat yet. <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> this has been a busy department this year. We have been a busy department for the last few years, and we're getting busier. Okay. And let me see. Building the code yeah. And we had a few questions there, so before we move the number so that we're not confused, just want to go over the questions first. Whoa. If you would like, I can present the budget to you. Um, what you have in front of you is a proposed budget of $221,324. Yeah, but that's... And that does have a small increase in it. Can I just uh, stop you right there, though? Sure. Yeah. We need, to, we need to move the budget line before you present it. Oh, and I thought you so asked you want to weave into... Yeah, I so moved the number that the building inspector offered. 
<laughs> oh, it's yeah. whatever page it's on anyway. Let me know what you wanted to do. Oh, I'm sorry, 87. Yeah, we're jumping ahead. Is what he was talking about. The total. Okay. Do you have a page for that, Paul? Page 85. 87. The total budget is on 87. Okay. Total budget. By Tim Jones. Any second? Mike, you want to move it? Yeah, second. By Mike Cook. 240 was worth about 324. Right. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. 87. Now, Kevin, if you would proceed if you, and in presenting it. Yeah. So, again, like I uh, was saying, uh, you have a proposed budget for 221, 324 um, for this upcoming year, which uh, results in a small increase, about 4.21%. And that small increase is strictly under wages and salaries. And that increase is due to contractual uh, obligations for a couple of the employees in my office, as well as uh, some recommended uh, adjustments as well. Other than that, the rest of my budget is a flat budget. No other changes to any other line items. So having said that, for a point of interest, Paul in my office, so efficient, I came in Monday morning, I had my end of the month report up to date. So as of uh, October, the end of October this year, I have collected in revenue fees collected $230,811. This year? Some change. So far. 230? Yeah, 230. I'm at 230, and we're pushing them out the door big time. And we still got two months to go, so. You know, Kevin, as long as you keep coming in here giving us more money than we're giving you. Yeah. I don't know what we got to what we have to discuss. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, you can't run away yet. I have to leave it open to yeah. everybody else. But you won't there's, be here with that. there's a reality here. Um, Well, I believe Jerry did ask him some written, written questions. Yeah, I did see some written questions, and I'll try to answer them the best I can. And I think the question, first question was the wage increases for three people, not in the default budget. Again, that um, looks more like a celebration than a question, I think. Comment. That looks like more like a celebration, that it wasn't put in the default budget. <laughs> <laughs> That's good news, right? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, two of the three um, individuals that will be... Well, two of the individuals will be seeing increases, and they are in the default budget. Is the other loan individual is proposed, and that wouldn't be in the default budget. <coughs> are those two individuals in the default budget contractual? Yes, they are, sir. Okay. So they're properly in the default budget, then? Correct, sir. Mm -hmm. They're the result of collective bargaining? Yes. Co two yes. Teamsters. Two teamsters. Teamsters. They're okay. both teamsters. Yeah. That's okay. totally legit. That's great. Mm -hmm. Great. Done. The uh, the uh, the remaining percentage of that you wouldn't see in the default because it's in the proposed budget that you have before you. Good man. Thank you. There you go. That's where we're supposed to see it. Yes. Oh. So number two, uh, to staff applaud. development. Uh, there was a question on that. Um, it didn't jump to eighteen hundred dollars. It has been eighteen hundred dollars. I look back all the way to like two thousand eleven, I believe. Oh, but it's, you haven't spent it. I haven't spent the full amount, correct, no. sir. You've spent on an average of $1,100 yes, over sir. the last four years. Yep. And uh, that's including 2014 annualized. So if you're spending $1,100 a year, I don't think you want to give you 1800 Mm-hmm. I can understand that. I can tell you that there are some things that uh, I would like to attend more often than I do, um, educational-wise. I've been contacted through the New Hampshire Building Officials Association and other things, but, um, you know, usually those are all-day affairs, so you're out of the office for the entire day, and right now, the way things are going, <coughs> I'd rather be here because we've got plenty on our plate, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is, that's an accurate statement that it's probably been averaging about $1,100. I haven't done the math, but I'll go with you on that. So uniform expenses next. Yep. 
We averaged three hundred thirty-six dollars over the last three years. Okay. With two thousand and fourteen annualized. So why are you asking for six hundred? Well, that number's been in there since I can, I I can you're remember. Not <laughs> you're not um, what I do is I have allocated two two hundred dollars. There's three inspectors per individual, and we use it as we need it. I think that's okay. reasonable enough. And um, okay. Thank you. You know, right now, I don't know where we are. I can tell you right where I've, I'm at right now as far as this year goes. Uh, uh, <coughs> you're at uh, two, 266. You annualize that at 354. Yeah, and I do have some invoices coming in because I know one of the inspectors did uh, just get some more winter-type shirts and that, and I, I need a new jacket. So I'm going to be Go buying ahead, one. Get yourself. I have one. Okay, moving uh, so, on. So on that on. number okay. will be changing. Thank you. Thanks. The gasoline now, question. Gasoline is a big one because not only affects you, but it affects the whole town operating budget as well as default budget. Gasoline is falling and will continue to fall. I have done some research on this. And uh, right now, uh, well, last year the average price for gasoline was about three fifty three a gallon. Right now it's... It's about three bucks, the average price for regular. And in Seabrook, you can get it for two ninety two or two ninety three. Crude prices came off the boil. Oil fell from one hundred seven a barrel in June to nearly eighty one because there's so much supply. We're exporting oil, and demand is falling. People are buying fuel efficient cars. Blah blah blah. Gasoline prices are falling. I would suggest a ten percent cut for all gasoline vehicles in all town. Fire, police, DPW, and uh, that would bring the average price from 353 down to about 315, 316. And that's hedging my bets right. because it, the, the, the gas prices can come up too. But I think they're going to continue to fall. They might even get 260, 270 ish before they make the corner and come back up if they're going to come back up. Jerry, I hear what you're saying. So I don't want to stay it. I don't know what she figured. Okay. I hear what you're saying, but. That's one thing that, as it goes down, it can also go it's back like the up. the stock market. I would say as we get closer to review, we can look at the market, and that's six weeks down the road. Fine. We can look at the market and then take that line in every budget and, every and, budget can, and consider what default. you're saying right. here. For tonight, this, there's nothing to this budget. Um, well, it's in his a line item. It's, it's in, in his It's in his line oh, item, it's but it's, a, it's an expense that yeah. will transcend through... Almost every budget, so May I don't I want to kill it. What we can, for can, I, can I just touch on that? One? Yeah, our gas is not. You don't look at the market mm -hmm. price because the, the you might contract say. from the state, yeah, right. which is a fixed price off of their process. I agree with you. We need to look at it globally. Right. With the new issued prices, right. which right. we just have to yeah, explore right. and see what the new number. Okay, we don't pay taxes. We don't pay those things in the That's top. Right. So our number is lower than what you're talking okay. about. Right. But if you look at the actuals of what's running in most departments, Jerry, we're still running. So, so my point is, I get it. We need right. to look at that globally and revisit it. Okay, okay. Got it. you're talking Good. six Thank weeks you. as opposed to That's six months. Right. What's going to happen? Hmm? Right. Too early to, to mm -hmm. make a decision yeah. on something. Well, right. okay. diesel fuels. Hmm. Any uh, other discussion? Uh, yep. Where did we stop? I think he was doing yeah, serious yeah. questions. One more question. Question five. Dealing with vehicle maintenance. Which I think is in there. Somewhere. Yep. Uh, it's five. on the second, it's on page. It's on second page. Mm. Next page. Question uh, number five. Yeah. Now vehicle maintenance. How, I know when I was a selectman, you got a new vehicle. Yes, sir. Have you gotten any other new vehicles? No, since well, we bought, left that we got a new one back towards the end of 2011, which when we bought it in 11, it was an actually a 2012 vehicle. Yeah. But it was well, in, in then, 11. Then. And then we got another one just a year or so ago. So I'm looking at vehicle maintenance and the cost over the last two years we purchased has averaged five hundred and seventy two fifty. That's good. The yeah. cost of, why is why are you coming in asking for eighteen hundred? Well again, that's been the number that has been in there, as you know, for several years. So we haven't adjusted it. Um, it's something we could look at. Uh, I can tell you the one that we did buy back in eleven is uh, is up for tires. So I'm gonna hope to get those done before the end of this year. 
because of the winter months coming in. Yeah. I mean, you know, your average vehicle comes through with 50,000 mile tires and, you know, we're getting there and sometimes we're in some pretty rough places so. to get into these job sites and that, so they take a licking sometimes, so. Yeah. So that's, you know, that'll be a $600 expense right there off the top. Right. Uh, for this year, I would imagine, somewhere in that number. So, and then uh, might be something we can look at down the road. I think it is for 015. You plow? I haven't made any, uh, no, we don't plow. Um, How many miles does that? Items. I'm concerned about gasoline, I'm concerned about the equipment maintenance, and, and the, uh, the other one I commented on. Kevin, how many, about how many miles a year do we eat up on the truck? Excuse me? How many miles a year do we eat up on the truck? Oh, jeez. I don't want to just throw a number out there because I don't want to be lying to you, so I'm not sure off the top of my head, but I know that we're probably 20-something, 20 23 to 25,000. So that, that truck from 2011 already has... 50, 60, yeah, 50-something, 50 almost 60,000. You could be looking at a bright job as well and, you know, some other yeah, yeah. stuff. You know? Yeah, I mean, that's your, your basic maintenance. Right. That, mm -hmm. That's warranties has expired on it. Right. So, I mean, anything we put into that right now is... Uh, so that, it's a vehicle maintenance expense. So that makes eighteen hundred dollars look reasonable. And you want to be cautious if, if he were to suffer an accident on these small budgets like this, because mm -hmm. an accident is deductible with the town insurance, thousand dollars, those type of things. So just be mindful of all of them. I mean, Kevin's a great bucks. driver; it's not going to happen. Eighteen hundred bucks <laughs> looks uh, pretty reasonable to me. Okay. Okay. I'll watch. Tomorrow I'll be at work yeah. and, you know, actually. <laughs> 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 you changed you, 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 yeah. 15 years. You know, it's like that mailman that... Yeah, we got a question. We got an accident after 40 I mean, years. He's got a budget of 216 and he's projecting, you know, 200000 So he's talking about a budget of $16,000. Yeah. Mm. Oh, 230 this year. Right? Well, that's mm. this year, but I mean, he's, I, this is, this right. is a no-brainer. Sunny? Of course. Mike? Only one quick question. How many vehicles do you have? Two, sir. Two. Thank you. That's all I have. Your, your vehicle thing needs to be updated in the back of the book. Say it again? It says two pickup trucks, 2012 two Colorado pickup yeah. trucks, 11,000 and 4,000 miles. Yeah. Mm. So oh, I'd have to look. That has to be adjusted. Yeah, that's what I said. It mm. needs to be adjusted. It's not up to date. No, that's that's totally wrong. Okay. I didn't put it in there. I'm trying to keep them as new as I can, Mike. I don't know if it works. <laughs> well, it's still 2012, but uh, it's, it's more psychological then. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you for what you do, and I have nothing. Thank you. Mike, you will get more? No, I'm all set. Steven. I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you. Jim. Unfortunately, I do have some questions. Uh, vehicle maintenance. Uh, I understand the DPW is in the vehicle maintenance uh arena these days for the town? Uh, they do um, our annual inspections, mm -hmm. and um, they do the um, required oil changes, you know, lube oil filter, right. and rotate, and I ask them to rotate the tires oh. while it's down there, Okay. every three to 4,000 miles. Okay, and so some of this money is actually being put into, I assume you're paying out of this account. Yeah, we pay. And it I'm goes to DBW. Yep. They, so it's kind of a wash. In we'll get respect. an invoice from them for the oil, for oil filters, whatever they may do mm -hmm. on that. As far as if you needed anything, you know, above and beyond that type of stuff, you know, we would then bring it to a dealership. Right. So, see, Jerry, some of that is actually staying in-house, so to speak, some of that money. Um, I'm just looking at the numbers. I hear you. And did I hear you say, Kevin, that uh, you got two uh, line items, sub-line items for $1,800? And it seemed like each one of them, you felt like you'd be comfortable lowering that a bit. Uh, did I get that sense accurate? The the eighteen hundred dollars. Yeah, the you get two subline items for eighteen hundred. Staff development and uh, vehicle maintenance. And I got a sense from you that you'd be okay lowering that a little bit, maybe taking twenty percent of shaving or something. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm told to. Um, I've been holding a, a pretty flat budget for many, many years, and, and I feel comfortable with the numbers I have. I don't want to start to regress if I don't have to. I don't know. You know, you take a couple hundred bucks here, a couple hundred bucks there. I mean, that's fine if that's, you know, what the committee would like well, to well, do. We're always looking at what you're spending. I understand. But um, 
No, I want to get an accurate sense of what you're comfortable with. I'm not making any advocacy here. No, no, I understand. Um, I'm pretty comfortable with what I submitted. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm done. Button. Are you able to keep current on the inspections? There was a problem with the fire department not having an inspector and delaying the process for lack of staffing. Yeah. Uh, do you have the same sort of problem? Are you getting blowback from the people trying to develop that you can't turn the process around quickly? Um, I can tell you, recently, especially, it just seems like, um, especially after the seafood festival here, there has been an incredible um, increase in just activity. And we are forecasting out three days to get an inspection, but we are trying to accommodate everybody the best we can. And um, we're basically doing uh, every half hour on the half hour, we're doing an inspection that's starting at 8 and that goes to 4.30. All right, so our plate is full, and you're talking two and a half inspectors out in the field. So that doesn't count what we have to do back at the office, emails, phone calls, review, applications, stuff like that. So. We keep them busy. I see this as the mad push before the real cold weather gets here. Mm -hmm. It's not uncommon. So, right now, we are for you know we are asking them, and, and the contractors have learned this over the last couple of months, and they're they're now calling like we're getting calls today Tuesday for an inspection on Friday. Mm -hmm. You know they're just thinking ahead. We just ask them think a little bit ahead, and if we can squeeze you in, if it's an emergency, we'll. You know, we'll get it done. We haven't been getting really any complaints other than, you know, they might be waiting an extra day than they normally would. We don't want to hold up progress. Absolutely not. So I think, you know, we got a good uh, rapport with most everybody out there and the homeowners and stuff like that, so they understand, and, and we're doing the best we can to help. I, agree. I don't think they should expect an overnight response. I mean, Correct. three days, yeah, three. Is, <laughs> I think it's pretty reasonable. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's just my opinion on this. Well, I appreciate that. May I add a comment, personal comment? I'm going to keep going around first. No questions. Okay. From my experience, your department's been wonderful. Every time we've called, you've said two or three days out, and you've been there, and you've delivered. So I have no problem with that whatsoever. Well, there you go. Good to hear. Mr. Ladd's question. No, I can I can always the same thing, being a contractor, electrical contractor. I mean, yep. He's great. There's no issues. Beautiful. None. You're hearing it from the. Uh, there you go. Coming right from the field. So there you go. Consumer. Just that's that's great to hear. Better, we'll be all right. But other than that, <laughs> I'll catch up with you later. Let you buy the new phone. <laughs> 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 no, I'm happy to have nothing. I think awesome. you a lot of work coming out of this. Mary Glenn. So. All right. Moved by Tim. Seconded by Mike. Yep. Yeah. 221,324. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay. What's next? No, you're going to do Sussex, you're going to do cemeteries. Cemeteries is here, right? Who's here? You took out yeah, I took MIS and put assessing and assessing in there. Okay, so assessing is they're here, right? Yeah. Page seventeen. Assessing is next, right? But you know what? In in fairness, Dan Kaiser, she's got like mm. all of two lines yeah, of mosquito. Let's, take care. let's yeah. get back. Okay. okay. Let's okay. give her a break. Come on in. One twenty. Mosquito. Mosquito control. Mosquitoes. Dragons. Dragonfly. <laughs> Dragon. Do we have a line item for that. Five people just died. <laughs> okay, 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 I'll take that too. Well, that'll get you. <laughs> Page one. That'll give you a line out of here. Close to the road. And OBS 13 mm -hmm. is all yeah. Don't kid yourself. You're up there on page 123, but you're far from done. No, I was looking for the comment on that, too. <laughs> 123. And Ann, I'm just going to throw that question out there for you. You can. Where gets you. Um, did you get your money last year? Did you get your three thousand dollars for the green head no, water traps? No, nope. the warrant article failed because it was said that it was uh, double dipping, which it wasn't. But um, that's all right because we are 
I put that in originally to the budget that I gave the Board of Selectmen and then took the $3,000 out, so the budget is flat now. Uh, we have money left over this year, and we managed to have the greenhead traps built with that money. Right. Excellent. Mm. Okay. So the budget right. is flat. It's 103000 All right, Mike, okay. so you want to move the 103, Mike? Yep. I'll second. second. All right. Want to talk to us? <laughs> you did, but it's flat. Like are you good yeah. with the flat? I am good with the flat. This will be the last year of the three-year contract, which the contractor had kept flat for the three years, the whole mm -hmm. three years. I don't know what's going to happen after after um, this year. When will you start to send that out to bid? Before or after the that season? Be, oh, that won't be until um, August. August. September yeah. of 2015. Yeah. Where, where do you put these traps in? Where do the greenhead flat yeah, traps in the go? Marsh? In the marsh. Yeah. <laughs> those are those little houses you see sticking yeah, up. Yeah. Little, <laughs> the black no, boxes. They're, they're not, not board houses. houses. <laughs> I do have a question <laughs> about the budget, if we can get back to that real quick. Well, there huh? are bird houses out in the marsh, thanks yeah. to one of our, <laughs> our residents, um, Dave Weber. But. Uh, these are much bigger. I see the big, big yeah. marks. Well, that's what they are. So they fly up in there and they can't get out, right? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. They're stupid to go back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They fly up in there and they're home, Jerry. All right, so fly. flat is flat, but I want to give everybody the opportunity to at least ask Anne any questions about it, because it's an important element when we start talking about mosquitoes. So by turn, Joe, I'm going to start here. I'm all set. Jerry, I have no good. further questions. Sunny. I got one question. Uh, the mosquito, I mean, the green has traps. It might be a project for the woodworking in the high school. We have had volunteers build traps in the past. It's tough to get those people now. And um, some of the traps were not built as traps. closely. I don't know, to the uh, uh, no, I was suggesting a high school so. project in woodworking, an ongoing project mm -hmm. that could actually install them too. Well, the installing them out in the marsh is mm -hmm. that gets a little tricky. Yeah. Who does that liability? Is contractor. The the contractor okay. does that, and they don't charge us very much for it. But when they install them, they have to add spikes yeah, yeah. to the legs that are on there yeah. so that they get put so down. So those spikes around. come off every fall when they bring them in. And so, you know, it's, it's yeah. and they're cumbersome. Yeah, there would yeah. probably be I a liability. I've got a question on mosquito control. Does the contractor look at the weather before he does it, or does he spray and then it rains? What? Oh, yes. It's all weather dependent. They can't spray if it's too windy. They can't spray if it's too cold. And, of course, they can't spray if it's raining. And you also have to have a reason to spray. So there have to be enough mosquitoes in the area to justify it. That's um, governed by the Department of Agriculture. What do you do? Take a sample of the water and count the eggs or whatever? Or? Well, that's for the larva siding. Yeah. They go down and they and they uh, scoop some Oops, of the water of and see how much larva is there. Gotcha. And then if there is enough larva, then they larva side. I got gotcha. you. We don't see the machine coming around the neighborhoods anymore, it seems. Blowing oh, yes. smoke. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, because it's you're much quieter. smoke yourself. It's much quieter. <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah. Jerry, we keep jumping smoke. back every other person. We're going to Michael. We took Michael's turn. I'm going to try to cut Jerry off at the pass with the smoke. Yes. Uh, in the default budget on page uh, OBS 13, you've still got the 106 rather than the 103. Can I ask what's happening with that? Should have been 103. It's 103. I know. Yeah. I'm asking our uh, financial lady, please. On OBS 13. I'm guessing that I must have uh, forgot to adjust that line because she adjusted it after we had already started to work with it, so we can correct that. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. I was just curious. That's her first mistake. That wasn't <laughs> your fault, though. We'll blame it on the lady over yes. in the corner. <laughs> Thank you. That's all I have, Madam Chairman. Good Ryan. observation, Michael. Thank you. Ryan? Trying to get Donda. 
Um, no, I think you could do a great job. The only other suggestion I would have is, um, and I know they've helped in the past, is the Boy Scouts. But that's for another year. Thank you. No questions. No <clears throat> questions. Thank you, Ann. You are. I wasn't bitten, and I thank you for that, and I have no questions. <laughs> well, I'm glad you weren't bitten. Great job. No questions. Thanks, Bob. No questions, Ann. <laughs> All set. Thank you. No questions. Thank you. Call thank you. Okay. You can call for the vote. All those in favor of 103,000? Unanimous. Yes. Unanimous. Wow. And thank you very much for job well done. Thank you, Ann. And I do have thank one you question all. for you off the record. Did we have less pools of water around town this last summer than normally? No. About the same? Yeah, about the same. Thank you. I will do assessing. A lot behind me usually floods, but it wasn't no, flooded at all. Is that next? Assessing or Mr. Mr. Tinker. Assessing. Mr. Tinker, if you would join us. Got a page there, Mike? 17. Thank you. What, what is it? Page 17. 17. Now, you all got a pretty good narrative for Good evening. Ed. How are you doing tonight? Thank you. There are no questions on this one right now. Like two hundred eighty-three thousand. Second. Second from Brian. Thank you, Brian. Okay. Want to talk to us? <laughs> um, sure. Um, the budget presented to you. Um, it's 283,145. Um, other than a few minor changes to four or five line items, the major change would be under wages for a temporary data collector that we are looking to bring on to lead us into the 2016 revaluation. Um, we do have an issue now with a number of properties that have not been inspected in recent memory and although we don't need to measure and list every property during a revaluation we must show that we're continuing to do that process um, it also lends to the value and to the picking up of um, correcting data picking up value making things equitable um, with our staff now, we only have <clears throat> one full-time field person um, and a part-time clerk. Um, the work is increased. Uh, building has mentioned uh, the number of permits they brought in. Um, our department has to enter each and every one of those into the CAMA system. Our clerk does that. We do that as well, but so our, our workload's increased. Permits have increased. We must go out and do those permits. That's how we generate value. We have to pick all those uh, renovations, additions, new developments. We need to go out and do that to put them on the tax roll. So as their business increases, ours does too. We're also leading into this revaluation, which is mandatory in 216. Um, so that's the reason for that part-time. Uh, hopefully we can get that temporary data collector to, to assist us. We're currently looking at around four to 5,000 properties that have not been measured. In the, uh, again, I can't tell you the last time they were measured. We have, um, the two years we did have the extra person, we were able to do about half the town. Uh, we continue to do in our sale pickups and our permit work properties that have not been measured will do the measurement at that time but that's you know doing one here there and you know we're currently um, actually just finished with Boar's Head we've started the cyclical work but we've started it with one person and myself so we're trying to slowly work at that number but the only way to finish it by 2016 is with that other person um, so it, it's, it's really kind of an important piece of the puzzle working up to the revaluation. We did have a full-time uh, data collector up through 2011. 
that person left, the position was not filled. Um, hindsight is that we should have kept that person. We would have been completing the entire town uh, next year. So we would have had it done at, in time for the revaluation. So that's where we stand now. We're, we're kind of doing what we need to do, but we can't get it done in time. And it, it also lends to the quality of the job, let's say. The more data we can correct, the better the results of the revaluation holds up. Um, the two years that we did helped a lot. We, this revaluation has held up pretty well. But the only way to continue that is to continue the data collection. And, and you know, it's just, it's just part of the process. We, we, we need a person um, to be able to complete it in time. So that's, that's that line item. Other than that, just real quick, um, the mapping line item uh, increased by $100. That's part of the contracted fee per year. Supply and expenses, we, able to, we were able to reduce that by $270. That had to do with supplies as well as some memberships. Uh, we added 200 to data processing, but that had to do with, uh, we, we actually pay for uh, the tax bills and, and things like that. And then motor vehicle, uh, we increased that by 300. That has to do with the more time we've spent, we're out on the road. So that was $300, a $300 increase. So overall, it's an increase of uh, approximately 40,000, but that has to do with, again, that, that potential employee. So if you have any questions. All right, Joe, I'm gonna start with you. Is your part-time wages? You're showing 32 hours, so are they getting benefits and stuff now? No, that's a that's a that's the clerk. That's the 32 no benefits. So then the the, the other position you're looking for, will they be getting benefits on that as well? Currently, we're looking to just spend for a non-benefit position for two years. It, it's possible that that might become difficult, but right now we think we can find someone to complete the work we need in that temporary position with no benefits. That's going to be our first avenue is to attempt to do that if, 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 if this position is available. And the other one is vehicle uh, reimbursement. Is that your personal vehicle you're using? Or is that we car? use personal vehicles. We don't have uh, town vehicles. So give you what the going rate is for miles? The federal government, yeah, 56 cents a mile currently. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Jerry. Yeah, the temporary person you keep saying temporary, you're planning then that after a year or whatever they would leave? It, it's planned to just have them for two years to complete the revaluation. And that's in the part-time line, right? No, it's under regular, regular wages. Regular wages. We're looking for someone full 40 hours but with no benefits. Well, how can the, we do that? I mean, with the, with because the it's a, I believe because it's a temporary. The affordable Act. Yeah. Yeah. There may be some issues with that. But yeah. Uh, well, they, there may be issues with getting someone to do I mean, it. Somebody working 30 hours a week is going to is is by law, I think, required. Could to it be done as an independent contract? That's the key uh, right there. That, that could be. That could be. Uh, that possibly. But yeah, what, what we were looking for is someone we could bring in and, and have them do it the way we need it done. I'm not saying that other people do it differently, but we want someone, the same person that's here doing it on a daily basis. With, with the contracting companies, we're going to get different people to fill the day. We're not going to have the same person for two years. So it's going to make it difficult to get this quality or the same work on a daily basis. That's why we are attempting to get a position outside of hiring a firm so that we have a constant person in place. Um. Mm. I don't understand that. But. Well, the fee, the fee for, for um, I was under the impression that if somebody's working 30 hours a week or more, they have they were eligible for the Affordable Air Act. Well, uh, affordable well, care act. I guess that's unless you contract it. Mm -hmm. But you can right. contract it with an individual as well. And the individual mm -hmm. specified in the contract, you are contracting that individual and mm -hmm. not necessary, necessarily a firm, right. but that's well, it's, that's a tough that's a tough way to start doing business as a town with employees. 
That's, but that's my opinion. No. Um, you know, I, I, I can't argue with you. I, I, all I know is we, we need, yeah, we need, need help. Body. We need a body. Mm -hmm. We need the work done. Right. <clears throat> No, I mean, to, just to let you know, I mean, we, we're talking, we're dealing with $300 billion worth of value that we're, we're, yeah. we're taking care of. Yeah. And we have, you know, two people taking care of $3 billion worth of value. It's, it's getting, well, not that we can do it, but it, to, to be able to complete these processes, especially with the increase in work um, and the reval coming up, it, it just, you know, it's, 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 it's a lot of work. Um, we want to make sure we have, you know, good data, mm -hmm. so everybody's being treated yeah, well, fairly and equitably. What's the sixty thousand? Ed, I see sixty thousand in this that's our, um, contracted services. That's our litigation expenses for appeals. Contracted services. Well, we, because this this line item is is used to hire experts, expert reports to Jerry, defend our to vend our values uh, at either the BTLA the or the. Remember the conversation last year. No. Oh. Okay, what kind? back and review the notes from last year. That's where the money was taken out of the legal budget, I believe. 20000 yeah. 20000 was taken from legal. And put in your budget. Right. And then, yeah, right. And now this is sixty. We increased my, uh, the line item 40 additional thousand. So now that our department will be in control of hiring the experts mm -hmm. in the expert reports. Mm -hmm. So has that other 40 come out of Mark's budget? I no, see. the 40, I think, was built into my budget back so when we did this. I have the 2013 budget here at 60000 right. Yeah, it's been That's since. Okay. And he had actuals of 22000 that year. That's what I remembered, is yeah. that you had, this is nothing new. We did this nothing ground new. last yeah. year. But the, some of the money did come out of Mark's budget right. that came in here. Right, and originally, yes. And the number's going to fluctuate on a yearly basis. It's not going to be 60 spent and gone because appeals and those, those are pending, delayed, Dates with the court, things. So it's now a is moving. This the, is this the total legal line for you? There's no additional funds built back into Mark's budget this year. No, this is this is it for. Thank you. I'm sorry, Chair. Go ahead. Yeah, I. I it's. Uh, I see. We spent actually in 2013 25k. Right, but but again, Jerry, you got to remember that you know and we zero in 2012. Um, I don't think we had that line item in 12. I think it, it's moved along in there some places. That was new last year. That's last year. Right. It's 33 year to date now. Right. Yeah, we spent money on this, but it came out of the legal they budget came out before of legal last year. There, Jerry. Right. Came out of the legal budget. Mm -hmm. Annualizes out to about 45,000 this year. Right, and we've got a, we've got, you know, we've, we've got a case in December. We had one recently that mm -hmm. got postponed. I mean, it's just they're ongoing and we don't, you know, the dates, a lot of dates are pending and we need to get reports done yeah. prior to. And, and my, my only comment here on this budget is the wages and salaries are also in the default budget. Exact number, I think. <coughs> so I, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I made a note it's in the default. You're in the new position, right, Jerry? Everything's there. Yeah. So, that should not be. Uh, nope. I mean, I'm trying to find it now. <laughs> the assessors. I, I don't want to belabor this point, you know, to, to You're right. the chairman of the board. Yeah, is there. So, I mean, you, you know, it, this is what it looks like to me. It's just a back door. I agree with you, Mike. Mm. Well, I mean, you can't, you can't be hiring people, entering into contracts, in a default year, I don't think. Okay, making all these pay raises, and then making people obligated in 2015 is what you're doing. Well, we don't. That I have problems with. One thing I will say: we have no pay raises. Our department has no pay raises for the year. The, the, the part-time or the temporary position is only a benefit to the town in regards to the revaluation <coughs> or the data collection. You know what we pick up in value every year. Yeah. We can pick up more value. We can make more visits. Not so much pick up that. I'm not saying we just go and pick up value. We but can correct the data, which will result in, you know. I don't have any problem with you saying that for the 2015 budget. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. But if the people fail this, 
you're going to get your line item anyway. It's in the default budget. Mm -hmm. And that's my problem throughout the default budget. Point taken. Yeah, Is that Sorry. Yeah. Uh, when, a pro when a home is sold, do you automatically change the assessment to the no. selling price? No. No. We do visit the property. Yeah. We send out letters. We, we attempt to visit each, but we cannot change value. We can correct data that may change the value, but we can't change the value to the sale price. The value has to stay based on the model from, let's say, the 2011 revaluation. What's, how those values are built is how they stay until we build again, which is in 16. Mm -hmm. well, about when the real estate market went down, you, you changed the values, right? We did a revaluation in 11, which was due to the, the market depreciating at a great uh, amount beyond the allowable ranges that are acceptable. So we had to do a revaluation in 11. But yeah, the values all came down because of that. The other question I have, I see a lot of towns are going online, putting the assessed values of the property and, and you, you GIS to right. you actually bring a photograph up. Mm -hmm. you know, do you have any attention He's to that? that? We have it. He's got it right now. Mm -hmm. We were actually one of the first um, communities in the state to, 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 to join with cartographic for that. That's, that's all online. Okay, I'll try to find it. You can find that through through the town's website. If you go to the assessing, there'll be a link to the online GIS. Okay, I'll take a look for it. Right. Moving on, Michael. Yeah, I have two or three. Um, my first question is, in, the, in 2014, what was the increase of valuation in Hampton due to new construction and things that would have changed the valuation? In, in, in four, 14, we increased the assessed values uh -huh. by a little over $30 million. About $30 million? Yeah, a touch above, close to 31 but yes, 30, think, 30 Give or take. Thank you. That answers that question. And I'm looking at OBS2 again, and I'm very unhappy about the comments that are made over to the right on this regular wages for assessing. Wages, new position remain remain statutory required. It's not more statutory required than I'm that's really required for me to be sitting in my chair. So that's a mistake. Well, so. I, think, I, th I think the statutory no. statement has no. to do with the requirement for the, the measuring work. and listing of properties. The every revalue. Uh, The revalue. Mm -hmm. Right. We're so, we value a new once every five years, minimum. Right. right. We can do it more often, but we have to at least. As part of that process, we must, within a cycle, visit each and every property. The problem is we have a large amount of properties that we've never been in that cycle. Mm -hmm. There's no date on them that has any relationship to the last 20 years or more. So based on that alone, then, Ed, I'm not picking on you. I don't well, take it that way. But if that's true for the one coming up, why wasn't that true for the ones that we've already done? It was. Well, but we, but we, we started the cyclical. If you remember, we had two years of full cyclical work. We, an employee left. He moved. Moved okay. to Florida. And when did that person leave? At 11? End of 11. Okay. So we did two years of cyclical work. We were actually able to pick and measure almost 5,000 properties mm -hmm. between the cyclical, the sales, the permits. Right. Since then, we've been doing sales and permits and some cyclical with one person. Okay. So we're we're lacking. You're getting behind, so to speak. Yeah, we're behind. We were we we should have had it completed for the. Uh, I can accept that. I just don't like the remark because there's no state statute that says you have to have six people or seven people or eight people. That's an incorrect remark. Okay, but I'm I do have. Um, let's see, what was my other question? I had one more question here before. Oh yes, back to the 30 hours and the uh, temporary person. The uh, like Mr. Uh, <clears throat> Zanoy pointed out under the new. I want to call it Obamacare, whatever you want to call it. Affordable Care, uh, Affordable Care Act, <clears throat> there we go. Um, 30 hours and above demand benefits. So I think you might have to look at 29 or some way to get around that issue. Right. I'm, I'm saying what we first wanted to do was look for a person to hire as a contractor, okay. therefore not having benefits. Can you do a contractor in that job? 
You can, yes. Okay. Like I was saying, there's companies that do that. Yeah. But to hire with, through them, it's a higher rate. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, you may not get, you won't get the same person on a regular basis. Yeah. They're gonna, they're gonna be moving people around. Yeah, I understand. So we're that, hoping to get somebody that we can train to do it the way we want to do it. And you're going to have and that consistency. That you're going to contract with that individual. That that was the original plan, based on this, is to actually do it as a contract. That might contract. Work. That, might, that work. might work, but I don't know. Is that something that the town has done in other areas before? I don't remember contract um, people not working. Sure. You never had this this real challenge of this issue, Mike. Like, so we're right. going to look at things differently. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say I didn't remember anything like this happening before. Thank uh, you. I'm working as a contractor right now. Yeah. For BAE and Nashua, and I, they don't give me any benefits at all. Because you know, I got my own benefits. Now, if I was working in a contract agency, maybe they would cover me. Right, and that may be the challenge regarding oh. finding someone to do the contract work, an individual. But yeah. we're hoping we can do that. But um, okay. Just asking because I, if we go down the contract path, then somebody comes along later and says you, later and says you can't do that because you're just avoiding the, the Affordable Care Act. Then we may have to pay the the uh, benefits in arrears or fees, penalties, it might be safer just to contract for 29 hours a week or something like that to start with. Right. There, there are individuals out there that are, mm -hmm. are, are have their own little company or do it on their own that, that would contract. If they're a contractor, so, you can put any hours he wants. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't mean to cut you off, Mike, but we That's can okay. I'm all set. move on. I'm all set with that one. 930 is coming. Um, I have a couple little problems, but they are, I guess, my problems. But one thing that caught me, though, was when you said you're using your own vehicles. Right. Who's paying for the insurance, or what's the, where does we that we just, we just We just get reimbursed for the mileage we put on the car. Fifty-six cents a mile this year. And there's no liability to the town? No. no. That's good. That covers everything. Thank you. Okay. When we get to 2016, mm -hmm. if we do not hit these cyclical properties and the reviews, what happens? The value stays as it was? No, no va the values all become anew in 16. All I'm saying is that the data that we're valuing, the, the, or the data we're putting these uh, adjustments, mm -hmm. codes, neighborhood codes, factors, Condominium complexes, when we put factors on to come up with value, it's a more supportable, better, more reliable job if we have more reliable data. Mm -hmm. The better the data, the better the job. I'm not I saying the job's going to be bad, but you know, it's, it helps support what we've done, helps the town support okay. what's, what's been done. But the reval will go forward regardless of whether you have yes. that data or not. Right. And typically, when you're able to touch a property, the valuation does increase if the market has increased. Is that fair if, to if, say? Typically. Not always. Well, I mean, because we look at two years, 18 months to two years prior to the date of value. Mm -hmm. So April 16, we'd look back 18 months. Yeah. What I'm so getting at is 2011, not a great year. I no. mean, we had bad years in real estate. Right. We're, we're recovering a little bit now. Yeah. So that well, is to say it. that we'll find increased yeah. values and things that we touch going forward. Yeah. All right. When we talk about this as a temporary position, it seems that we fell behind based on what you said because we mm. had the position full time. And then we gave it up like we've given up a few things only to have them come back again. Right. Um, or not be able to come back again when we've needed them. And I just want to be clear where we're going with that. I mean, I, we're going to have this or propose this position for a two-year period. We haven't hired anybody here yet. No. For a two-year period, and then we're going to lose that position again, Ed, and then well, where are we? Fall, then fall behind again? I mean, will we start this whole thing well, going all over sorry. again? Typically, most a lot of towns that will contract out yeah. for a company to come in and do their cyclical work. It may be a little too much sometimes. They'll do a fifth of the town for five years. Then they'll start again doing a fifth of the town for five years. 
Some properties may be seen two years in a row based on how they do that. But going backwards, wasn't the idea of having that employee so that we wouldn't do that because when we contract it out to a company, right. we ultimately right. pay more money? That's what I guess I've got a little yeah. bit more history yeah. here. Yeah. Going backwards, it was why we had the employee, but then we lost the employee and we didn't replace the employee. So here we are talking no. about possibly contracting, but then for two years, and it's, I just feel like <clears throat> we're getting a I feel like we're getting ourselves into a a, a jam. Yeah. Into a corner. Yeah. The, the constantly. Dis yeah. The discussion when the, that person left was that, and, and again, it was probably not on my part looking at the data as closely as I should have. Typically, if you're doing cyclical and you're doing, you're continuing to do it on a regular basis, that's acceptable. But the problem here is that it was determined that all the properties haven't been seen so that we could say we're doing cyclical and we're okay. We, we haven't done cyclical on 4,000 properties. Mm -hmm. So that's why the, the regular cyclical is not really with one person's going to be able to complete what we need to do. By 2016. Yeah. Had we had somebody all the way through, though, we would have. Yeah. Um, okay, and on this, th there's no breakdown. It's just $163,950 on that line. Right. So what would the breakdown <coughs> be for that that data collect, that data collect? Um, it's, it's 18 dollars an hour. So I believe it's 40350 Would that be correct, I think? More than the part-time. I guess it's 40 hours. If, yeah, be 40 hours. All right, thank you. Mike. Well, this is kind of a catch-22. Yeah. Back in the late 80s where we revalued, it was seven or eight hundred thousand dollars mm -hmm. to revalue the town. Right. Mm -hmm. And everybody thought that was outrageous. <laughs> what year was that, Mike? 88, I think. 87 or 88. Yeah, we just had a revalue. Yeah, that every five but that years. but that was a hired company. Yeah, and they came in and measured and relisted everything. Supposed to do though, they they didn't measure and list everything. They 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 well, did field review. Um, well, they yeah, took pictures. We actually what, took pictures because we had no pictures, so they yeah. took nine thousand pictures. But, yeah. but seven or eight hundred thousand dollars. But that was supposed to last for fifteen years. Right, the old st with with very little update, only the new stuff, more or less. Right, that's the old the old, the old way state. of doing it. Right. Now we're we're trying to do it every five years. The legislature, up, yeah, right, up to current standards so that everything is up to date. Mm -hmm. But we're falling behind by not having someone here, right. as this position was created in the beginning, was to keep the person full time. Year to year to year to year, so that every five years we were right where we were supposed to be. Everything was was current. Yeah, we had the we had the five year schedule right. set up. It just again, like I said, we so we so we've dropped the ball when, when the person left. We dropped the ball, and here we are now, several years later, behind the eight ball again, trying to catch up. So yeah. you're going to do this for two years, part time. To get to get caught up. To get caught up, and then what, the next three years what's going to keep us <laughs> caught up at the end of those two years, so that we could carry on? Well, the, the 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 five year requirement is value anew. It isn't it isn't specifically measuring list once every five years. What I'm saying is if if those properties that were never they don't have a date. They, right. The dates I think there's a default date of 1900 and something. I mean 1914 or something. That's what I'm saying is if those properties had been looked at yeah. in the past 10 years, right. we wouldn't have the issue we have because the data would be more current than no data at all. I mean, we have the data, but no verification when anybody was there. Going forward, once that's done, we don't need to go out and pound 20% of the town every year. The amount of work we're doing, we're picking up quite a few. We've, we've, we've gained a little on that. A number of properties, but the problem is we don't have the ability to concentrate just on those. Yeah. 
and that's what we want to do. Yeah, so you need some time to concentrate on that. Yeah. This position would do that. Like, like right now, what we're doing <coughs> is we're trying to finish the beach. We, yeah. we, we, we finished Boar's Head. We're moving to Place Cove, and we're starting to do North Beach. Um, so we're hoping before the end of the year, with this, with myself and and Charlene, yeah. that we can have the beach done because the rest of the beach got done during those first two years. Okay. Steven? I have to. I have to ask, I have to wonder why some people got some pretty hefty raises and you don't get any. And I just have to wonder why. I, I don't, know. don't understand that myself. And, and it seems as if, you know, some people get a 9% raise. It seems like you, it, it would be more practical if you got 2 or 3% every year versus zero, um, that doesn't make any sense to me. And I, I guess you don't have an answer for that. Um, did Have you gotten the final figures from Shelley from the DRA? Yes, that's... So the bills will go out this week, perhaps? Um, I think, uh, well, is it still the 10th? Or? I believe it's still the 10th. There was a software glitch this morning. Mr. and uh, Banner uh, they're scheduled to go out on the 10th. Oh, okay. But the they're scheduled to go out on the 10th. There was a little problem with the software today, so I didn't confirm, but I'm pretty sure they're still going to be going out on the 10th. If not the 10th, they'll go out the 12th okay. of next week, the bills. Thank you very much, Ed. You do a good job. Thanks. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Tim? Hi, Ed. Sir? Uh, the uh, temporary data collector, mm -hmm. uh, what is the dollar amount for that in this line item? Uh, forty thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. I believe that's. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. eighteen fifty an hour. We seven forty a week. Right. Well, 18, I don't care about the dollar. The total for the year. Forty thousand three fifty. We're hoping. Yeah, we're hoping for forty. Yeah, yeah I, I, I may I may know a contracting firm that can help you out. So I'll talk to you out of here on that. Okay. Um, the sixty thousand dollar. Uh, contract of services for litigation expenses. Um, you know, from my point of view, I keep seeing this in here. Some years you don't spend it, some years you do spend some of it. Uh, but in any case, there's going to be a remainder at the end of the year which kind of gets flopped into the general fund and you start at zero again the next year. I think we, we might be well served if we actually had some sort of dedicated fund for that. Well, so that there's, you know, if you don't spend it in a given year, it just stays with you. Uh, and that's a comment, it's not a question. No, okay. okay. Yep. Yep. Otherwise than that, thank you, Madam Chair, I'm done. Okay, thank you, Bob. <clears throat> I just have one question. What is your protocol if someone refuses to let you in the house when you want to do a visual um, inspection? If refusal means we don't go back. We, if they refuse, we don't go. Um, when, if they, you know, if they, again, there's laws where if there's a tr no trespassing sign, we can go to the front door and knock, but we can't walk around the property because if we get caught, that we can be, you know, arrested or whatever or, or charged. So anything gated, we don't go in. If there's a sign, we only go to the front door. If we're asked to leave, we leave. We don't go back, and we use what data we have to the best of our ability. Twenty steps back and gives them a full evaluation. You know, Hampton's pretty good, though. We don't. We really don't have uh, those kind of issues. Uh, we haven't. Um, <clears throat> I think it's been pretty good. Our success rate of measuring and listing properties has been pretty good um, compared to some areas, some towns. You're saying that we need a data collector in preparation for 2015. 16. 16. Uh, 2016. And you're proposing in this budget to hire a full-time individual at $40,350, right? Yeah. At $1,850 an hour. Mm -hmm. For how many hours a week? 40. Well, 40, 40, 40 hours, hours a week, yeah. right? So this becomes a full-time employee with all of the benefits and everything. No. no. We're going we're gonna, we're gonna, to hire. We're hoping to hire contractors, what we're aiming to hire. Well, that's what I say. You have three options, right? You were talking about hiring an individual contractor. 
Right, there's companies out there that are visit. company or yeah. are from yeah. some company or agency. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But not we went through this having a full time <laughs> town employee in this. Correct. Business. Right. <laughs> Correct. All right. All right. That's, I just that's, want to clear that up. Okay. Right? Now what happens after the two thousand and sixteen battle? You don't need a data collector anymore? Well, we need one, but the position is just a two-year temporary All position. Right. It's, it's going to be a two-year temporary contract or position <laughs> just for the 2016. Just, to, just, just to get us caught up. Yeah, right. exactly. I just wanted to clear that it wasn't going to be a, all of a sudden we've got another no, time. We wouldn't, no, we wouldn't. It's, it's, it's just a two-year. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm all set. Okay. okay. All set. Thank you. Thanks. Not a rig. All right. Nope. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I think we killed it. Okay. We gave you every option in the world on that new employee. All right, we have a motion. We have, a we have the motion. It's been seconded by Brian. Okay, all those in favor of, let's get the total, 283,145. All those in favor? Okay. Opposed? Jerry? Jerry? Jerry. Abstaining. You're abstaining? Mm -hmm. May I ask why, Jerry? I mean, we shouldn't be considering the default budget abuse a reason to vote on uh, the proposed budget. I, I'm just, I just think that uh, I'm just flabbergasted by the budget submitted in here. Totally flabbergasted about the 2015 budget submitted into this room. Oh, I agree with that, but what about eight, eight this? Eight percent. Eight percent. You know, some attorneys know. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Ed. Okay, thanks. Thank, Thank you very much for coming in. Thanks, Ed. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. Mr. Shaw. Come on, come on, come on up. It's not Shaw, it's the other guy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> Right. I am so sorry. I'm so. What am I? Oh. Welcome. You know. I, to, thank you. Thank you. Welcome, you, 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 you know. I, you know. I, I do. I do realize. Uh, I may well be the last ones to see you. But does that mean that you have to be the last ones to see me every year? Yeah. It kind of balances <laughs> out that. <there. laughs> it's called balance. Man. I, I got you. We saved the best for last. Yes. There you go. And wanted to note that. One of the uh, one of the cemetery trustees, uh, Sue Irwin, is up in the back. Sue, if you're comfortable back there, otherwise you should join us up here. I know. You're going to let us just torture him, okay? Uh, Danny, thank you for your patience. Not, not at all. Uh, Can I just stop you for one minute, Bob? I didn't see your vote um, on. <laughs> He wasn't here. He wasn't he wasn't the other table. He was I, I thought I saw you wave in the I did. hallway. I voted an abstention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't see. I couldn't. That's if I don't see it, then I can't. Well, observe, I can't if I'm allowed done. to vote, I'm for it. I, I, I can attest to his wave in the hallway. You got up at the end of the discussion. If we right. were in the middle, it would have been different. <laughs> All right, um, thank you. And I'm sorry. I just no, wanted no. to clean no, that up before okay. we went forward. Okay. And page 35. Well, yeah. Yeah, well. The 37 is a total, though. Okay, let's go to 37 and put the total and discuss the whole thing. We're brave. $125,351. Second? Wait a minute, who moved Jerry seconded. I, okay, Mike, thank you. Jerry. All right, Danny, we. Okay, I, I guess the primary question that's being asked is uh, the line uh, regarding contract labor, which. Uh, you know, why have we, we increased it 3000 and why haven't we spent it yet? Um, <clears throat> answer to that is this. Over the past um, several years, uh, Susan, who not only is a trustee but also on behalf of the Heritage Commission, has sponsored a Warren article for restoration of the Pine Grove and Ring Swamp cemeteries. And uh, they passed comfortably. Uh, Susan's done a wonderful job with it. Uh, there's $3,000 left to, do, to finish off uh, Ring Swamp, and uh, Susan asked us this year if we could incorporate that into our budget instead of there being a Warren article. So the, that's, the, that's the reason for the $3,000 increase. <clears throat> the reason uh, you haven't seen it spent yet comes down to our hedge clipping, as uh, you know, we have like 180 hedges that need to be clipped every year. 
I had a heck of a time finding a landscaper this year. I do did finally find a gentleman who's doing a fine job, but he's not quite finished yet. He's 99% there, and that bill hasn't come in yet. Once it does, it's going to wipe out that line, and then, we won't and, be asking and then some. So, and I guess that was a question. So, other than that, I'll, I'm just here to say once again, I'm uh, very pleased with. Um, and appreciative of what we do. Our purpose, as I stated in the past, is peace. Um, fortunate to work with people who fully understand that, and I'm also very proud of the uh, 25 largest cemeteries in the state. We are the only ones that operate uh, with a budget of under 150,000. And that's all I got. Very good. All right, I'm going to start on this side with Glenn. No questions. Thank you. Yes, sir. All set, thanks. All set, Thank you. No questions. Pass. No questions. And thank you, Dan. I will not forget your name again. Sorry. I apologize. No questions. It's a compliment to tell me you look like, tell me I look like a man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, what's his opinion? <laughs> Yeah. He's he's an Irish. Uh, he's an he's what a um, <laughs> yeah, he's uh, an Hawaiian Eskimo, and I'm an Irish Native American. So you know, it's easy to just, anyway. <laughs> so whatever. <laughs> and I don't have any problem with your budget because, quite honestly, for what you do, I don't know how you do it with the budget that you give us. And. Um, Every year that we've sat here together, I've waited for like, you know, Chicken Little, the sky finally fell. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you bring us another budget that the increases all have logic. Unfortunately, when you have a budget this tiny, if you spend $10, it looks like a 50% exactly. increase. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, and I just want to compliment you and, and your board of trustees and on doing an excellent job and taking care of um, an area that means a lot to a lot of people, Absolutely. okay? And maybe not the way you think of in everyday life of having a community center, um, but this is every bit of as much a part of the people of this town and, and how they feel, what makes them feel good inside. And um, I want to thank you for keeping this budget where it is because it's this is not easy. This is okay. not easy. Thank you, Ivy. Um, I have just two things, I guess. Um, on page 31. Um, yes, please. 31. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. 35. I'm trying to read the book. Hey, 37, I think. Yeah. 35. 37. 35. Um, well, anyway, gas heat. Mm -hmm. You have 1,700. Um, you did budget 2,000 mm -hmm. for last year, mm -hmm. but you only have 269. Mm -hmm. 707 in 2013. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. Well, because I have a brand new building. Right. Uh, it, it, it was renovated, and as far as the utilities, uh, this, we've only had really just one full calendar year of trying to figure out how this mm -hmm. is all going to work. So it's had, utilities are always hard to begin with, but now with all this, um, I didn't have running water in the past, so I used to just turn the heat off. If I was, uh, Going home on Friday night, didn't think I was coming back to Monday. I just turned the heat off. Um, can't do that anymore. And it's uh, it was made to be, and Maddie did a great job with this. Uh, the building was designed to be more efficient, and we think it will be. But uh, you know, it's it's a new building. It's all new. So. Okay. Can answer that question. This is, the first, this is the first winter of it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the second, but it's the first full year in total. To, so it's, I still don't really have a real handle on it yet at this point, Rich. And is this the same increase for water? Water is crazy. Well, you know, uh, we have an ir no. Uh, you know, we have an irrigation system that I'm quite, as I've said before, I'm quite sure was put in by Ben Franklin's uh, <laughs> uh, youngest son, and we do get a lot of water leaks and. 
I, I'm very fortunate. I have men there that can fix them. My my guys, my groundskeepers are amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, oh. and we fix. But oh. sometimes they get underneath. I I had one. Uh, I'll never forget. Uh, <laughs> one year was several years ago. A uh, Memorial Day. Uh, Saint. What was the day the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor? Okay, the same day, December, December right? Okay, okay. The Pearl Harbor infinity. Day surprise. I got to, you know, the water had been turned off for a month and a half, and all of a sudden I get this twenty-seven hundred dollar bill from the water company. I took it down. They admitted it was a mistake, but it was still seventeen hundred. And uh, you know, we just never know. So a lot of times those leaks are underneath. So it's hard. Uh, we have, we, we just have to look at the meters and try to watch them the best we can. But it, it's difficult. Thank you. Uh, I didn't quite follow your uh, line item with the contract strategy, the labor. Act. Can you tell me that again? Just real quick. You, you said something about a warrant article, and I was trying to keep that straight in my mind. The last few years. Yeah. Uh, Susan, uh, on behalf of both, serves both the cemetery and the Heritage Commission, commission has successfully sponsored a warrant article yeah. for restoration of the Pine Grove and Ring Swamp cemeteries. Okay. And she's overseen it, as I say, and she's done a wonderful job. Uh, she needs another 3000 to finish it, this phase of it off, which is Ring Swamp. And instead of doing the warrant article this year, she asked requested that we incorporate it into our budget. So okay. it's, there won't be a warrant article. Okay. It's in the budget. I was thinking the other way around. I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. How many residents do you have? And do you get any complaints? I haven't had any complaints from the residents. Uh, the, the, rel the relatives occasionally have uh, comments to make, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, seriously, you know, uh, and I, I know I say this all the time, um, but I'm going to say it again because I think it's important. Um, a cemetery, when we talk about rest in peace, um, well, that's really not up to us. That's up to a higher power. You know, our purpose is that those who could, for, it's for the living, when they come and visit the cemetery, that they feel in peace. That's what, it's, uh, that's what it's all about. As far as, uh, yeah, we do. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll probably be one of the last public cemeteries around, actually. We're good, we're good until mid-century. But, you know, having said that, children being born today will not be interned in High Street, but uh, that probably won't be the method. Uh, by mid-century, that's not going to be the method of public uh, it's like what it's going to be is that there'll always be private cemeteries, but what it's probably going to be at that time is um, public mortuaries for cremains is where it's headed. Or oh, where we're headed. Well, we're, we're probably not headed there, but uh, well, who knows? <laughs> Jerry? Jerry? Look, he's he's operating on a on a skinny budget, a very thin budget. He always has. He's really on a shoestring. I, I really, I as much as I'd like to dive into this and go over every line item and and, and go over some dollars and pennies, I I I I'll, I will support his budget. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> well said. Jerry, how does the default side look on that? Uh, the default, We're going to move on from that, that, that discussion. Okay, so it's clean. That's clean. great. It's clean. The way it's supposed to be. Another one for applause. Thank you. Joe. All right. We have the motion. We have the second. We've had the discussion. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Yes. Unanimous. Thank you, very much. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank, thank, you. Much. thank you very much. Whatever your name is. Thank you. <laughs> Susan, thank you. Yes. I'm telling you. All right, I'm going to make this short and sweet. We have no new business to discuss, no old business to discuss tonight. All right. The minutes Joan is polishing off for us, so we will do all the minutes at the next meeting, at the beginning of the meeting, not to leave them undone. We have legal move to next week. Um, next week we are meeting, let me get this right, 
<sighs> we have Wednesday, well, right? The Wednesday the 12th. Yes, Wednesday now, are the 12th. These are ones that we should be looking at. Yes, just <laughs> add legal to that. Legal. We missed MIS tonight. We're going to put MIS on on December 10th. Okay, but we'll move legal ones kind of in that mix anyway. Madam Chair? Yes. I do have a couple of questions relative to old business. Why don't you get them in in the next two and a half minutes? Yeah. <laughs> Make your questions. I have a legitimate Thank question. you. I know there was a, there was a, at the, at the last meeting in which I wasn't here, I heard a motion uh, to request the Board of Selectmen to make an adjustment on the default budget from the Budget Committee's budget. Yes. Um, and my memory isn't quite clear on that, but did we, did the committee instruct the Selectmen's representative to make that message? Yes. Okay. Because yeah. that didn't seem to take place last night, and I was a little concerned about that. Okay. And the other one was, we still have outstanding is... Um, Tim, since you weren't here, yeah, yeah. I'll make sure that that's part of the minutes to be reviewed at the next meeting. Right, that's All right. right. And then that way we can review that, send that forward. Nothing's going to change the world between now, other than the fact that we... I don't want to make a big deal out of it. Right. I just want to keep it alive. And the other one is the, you know, we pay, we pay New Hampshire Municipal Association enough fees or dues every year to get a free seminar. Several months ago, this budget committee asked the Board of Selectmen if uh, they were not going to use it, perhaps we might. They said they would. Uh, and Chris, Jim answered that. Hey, Jim said said they would. That would yeah. be and, and then I followed up and asked, well, you know, when will it happen? What will be the subject? And he said, well, I'll get back to you. Well, right. we're now less than two months before the year is over and that expires. So, we can so I'd like to say. For the follow up on yeah, that. exactly. All right. One more follow up, real quick. You know, uh, email addresses, they shut Yahoo off with the email on here, Yahoo. Yep. So can you, if you ask uh, Paul or somebody what are the procedures, we can give it. We, there's already slots yeah. for us to have email addresses if we want them. Yes. But through you. Yes. Can you do that? I can do that. Thank you. All right. I'll move to adjourn if you would accommodate that motion. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm still one quick question. Would the committee be interested in giving the secretary a five dollar raise? We already we, took care of that last week. We, 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 we built it into the new budget, but there will be no raises this year to carry forward into next year. Oh. We're not doing that. that. We, don't we, don't that. we went through that last week. Huh? When were you taking that again? Doesn't <laughs> <laughs> have yeah. Dave come back in? We did that already. We did that he, he is coming back. No, that, I'm asking that question. Yes. No, we took it out. Yes, he is coming back tonight. He was one of the right. candidates, the so right. he no, said he wouldn't be here tonight. No. But yes, so at the next meeting, hopefully, we'll all be reunited with our secretary, with Dave. Oh we'll God. be at the exact. <laughs> there you go. All one, right. One, one thing you have, might want to check on. It wasn't a motion to accept him. It was a welcome him back. So you may need to redo that one real quick. I thought we did. We didn't. Well, no, such a James picky you. Yeah, we did all that because Jane wanted to swim yeah. back. And she over. said, have him yeah. swig into the We're office and have him respond. Right. It right. is a law be straight up. Oh, well, he's concerned. Yeah. I'm not talking to him anymore. Yeah. We did. We were here. The work it was just welcome. Yeah. Her, welcome right. Are we done? I don't think you're hearing what he's saying. Huh? I don't think you're I've hearing what he's saying. I don't think you're hearing what he's saying. Well, what he's saying is that you made a motion last week to welcome Dave back. And we voted. Right. But that doesn't, that isn't to accept them back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think the word, I think the word you're looking for is to nominate him back. Right, nominate, right. Well, the thing is, is, but here's the thing, okay? <laughs> Not that and I this care. is why this God, word was off. used. <laughs> Technically, unless the town clerk gets the resignation, which she did not, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He has the right to rescind it. Okay. What happened is that we couldn't get Pat Collins, and Pat Collins never sent his, so it put us in the same position. Mm -hmm. So she accepted the one that was forwarded to me because we weren't able to get in touch with him. That's why she let that stand, but to cover herself, that's also why she wants to re-swear in Dave. Okay. So it had less to do about him more to do about what didn't happen or what she didn't have and how we couldn't contact okay. all right pat collins that it seemed to be okay we're going to kind of overdo it on this end for what we weren't able to do over here but so that it's clear to everybody 
when you resign, sending me an email doesn't mean anything. It, it means it's something. It lists your intent. Right. We talked about that. But it needs to go to the town clerk mm -hmm. to be valid. All right? So, so once the town clerk declares that you've resigned, then you've resigned. Exactly. But right. nothing was forwarded to her by right, me. Right. But the problem is the town clerk in the meeting last actually said, as a factual statement, he did resign. No. That's what she said. It's the not quote. a fact. Here's the problem. It's not a factual statement coming so, from her because she had no letter of resignation. Well, she we, made that statement on we, her own. Well, then she made it on her own, which is why she wants to swear him in. I, you know, this is... Let's get out. Yeah, one. exactly. <laughs> you know, All right. Whatever. Motion to adjourn. I'm going to hand it to you. All right. Well, we've got to move the time now. 935. 935. Yeah. 935. Okay. Who made, the, who made the motion? I did, about a half hour ago.